Hello and welcome back to Lorehammer. My name is Eric. Boys back in town. Boys back in town. Hey, I'm Mark. Uh, wow, I didn't know that we were actually going to start a singing <laughs> group. But... I'm just expanding the different talents I have, you know, and I think I can really kind of take American Idol by storm. It, wow, yeah. American Idol. <laughs> I might be like 10 years behind on my references, <laughs> but whatever. Hey, joining us today on Lorehammer, we've got two of our favorite people. We got... Absolutely. One of us who, one of one of the guests was one of us. <laughs> That but was... which one? <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't you, Chris. So I'll say that right now. We have Jordan joining us. Hello. I have returned. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For the best episode ever. Mm -hmm. Just... Some, for the most important episode yeah. ever. Number you... 99. And you can finally one. learn why we even got you into 40K in the first place. You can finally <laughs> yeah, learn about the Emperor. It was because we thought you were this guy, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> we came to talk to you about you. That was the whole point. You know, you just haven't realized it yet, yeah. but you are. You haven't mm. stepped into your role. But one day, we'll one be day. there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You'll be fully realized as the Emperor of Mankind. A fully actualized. Mark was just the steward of the cult. <laughs> <laughs> he was grooming it for you. I'm Malkador. <laughs> you were Malkador. Uh, <laughs> the whole time. What does that make me? A uh, servitor, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> That's about as good as I can expect, probably. So, uh, We also got Christian joining us today. Um, Christopherson, hello. It is a pleasure. For the last time, unfortunately. <laughs> this this is your very last time. For real this time. On Lorehammer, yeah. We'll never see you again, ever. Yeah. It's not my last time with you. It's your last time with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, when uh, you say it like that, now I feel left <laughs> Yeah, I don't Son like of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, come back. <laughs> okay. Uh, well... Before we get into our episode, we're going to just do some quick housekeeping. Uh, if you uh, like Lorehammer and you want to support us, you can go to Patreon. You can give us a buck. You could also, like, PayPal us, like, a fucking 25 bucks if you really want. Or 6,000, your choice. Yeah, like, I'm not going to... I'm not going to tell you how much to give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Or, or Bitcoin. I'll give you my uh, Bitcoin wallet so yeah. you guys can send all your yeah. Lorehammer Bitcoin to me. <laughs> yeah. I'll get it to them. <laughs> I promise. Yeah. yeah, okay. That seems legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you do uh, join our Patreon, if you want to support us, we actually have some cool things going on in our Discord right now. Yeah. Uh, where we're doing like a, a year-long Armies on Parade thing. And if you participate with us for each month, we are going to send you a cool pin yeah. for participating in that month's challenge. Um, and so by the end of the year, you should have a painted army and a whole stack of Lorehammer pins. Yeah, which collect would be pretty all, cool. and you can make one wish. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, have you ever heard of the Dragon Balls? <laughs> it's not like that because these wishes don't work. Yeah, no, no, but similar concepts. Right, right, right. Very similar. You do it. You collect them all and you make the wish. Yeah. These wishes just don't work. <laughs> yeah. So good for you. Yeah. So come join our Discord where you can collect these <laughs> wonderful <laughs> bins. <laughs> um, also, uh, if you haven't heard, I have another podcast. I do a podcast with my girlfriend. It's called Pillow Talk with Mark and B. So, hey, if you like listening to me, but your girlfriend hates listening to Laura hammer listen to pillow talk with mark and b well you can still listen to me but your girlfriend can listen to b it's just a nice simple podcast with girlfriend we talk about relationships we talk about lost love we talk about whatever come join us it's nice i've heard that you're going to be talking about um golden showers on that show at some point <laughs> I, i've heard that was an int i'm yep. a little curious yeah yeah, yeah yeah that will be the sex episode if you ever want to know what i get up to in the bedroom <laughs> yeah yeah come check out i'm that curious one. Yeah. how into your nipples how how much do you like your nipples touched because when i've touched them before <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it felt like you they never, quiver for sure you weren't really <laughs> yeah they yeah. were nervous yeah people and they don't know what to think yeah. of the quivering but yeah no they like it okay. they like it all right. <laughs> so come to listen to Pillow Talk <laughs> with Mark and B. <laughs> have all your deep air questions oh, answered. <laughs> uh, and we got one more shout out here. Uh, you boys. Yeah. We uh, we do a side podcast uh, called Star Wars uh, where we talk about Star Wars. Yeah. So The lore of Star Wars. Yeah. And I believe you guys have a little uh, clip for us, a little promo. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's listen to that right now. Hey folks, this is Jordan with the Star Lores Podcast, the number one Star Wars podcast on the Holonet. 
On Star Lords, we cover the deep history and lore of the Star Wars Legends universe. What is Star Wars Legends? I'm glad you asked. Legends contains all of the stories, mythos, and characters of Star Wars prior to the Disney acquisition of the property. We also feature in-depth discussions, movie and book reviews, and so much more. You can find us on any podcasting app or search for us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Google. Simply type in the Star Lores podcast in the search bar. Make sure to give us a follow and send us a message. May the force be with you. Well, hot diggity dog, if that doesn't make you want to listen to Star Lords, I don't know yeah. what will. Oh, my God. The, the one cool thing about Star Lords, I'll say before we move on, is you guys produce all the episodes. You put sounds in. You actually write scripts as opposed yeah. to whatever the fuck we're doing here. <laughs> um, Not good, that's yeah. for sure. No, no. So that trailer, you know, it's I, like I think the, it's word is the same effort. quality. <laughs> I've like never put, tried What that. is the effort? <laughs> yeah, it's a secret ingredient. Yeah, it's fun. Join us. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think we should really just get right into the meat of the episode. An yeah. episode that we swore we would never do. Um, yeah. I swear a lot of vows that I don't keep, though. <laughs> I was married once. So, like, <laughs> you know, what is words at the end of the day? <laughs> but yeah, today we're talking about the Emperor. <laughs> Fuck, what are words? Now I'm mind tripped out. <laughs> God damn. <sighs> yeah, it's going to be a crazy episode. Before we get into it, I'm going to say a couple things though, about the Emperor. Um, a, it, you should worship him. You should. With you all your heart should. and all your soul and all yeah. your mind. And if you don't, like, that's fine too. Just, you know. We're going to kill you. That's right. We'll yeah. find you. Yeah, yeah just yeah. mild maiming will happen to you. That's right. Just mild. <laughs> Until yeah. you start worshiping. <laughs> but uh, the thing about the Emperor is we don't know some of his storyline yet so depending on when you're listening to this the siege of terror books might be out they might not be out and the whole death of the emperor we don't know how that happens yet we don't know all the intricacies but we will within the next couple years i'm sure but (laughs) fuck me within a couple of years (laughs) that's the thing it's like i can't keep waiting you know yeah we ought to talk about this we're 50 fucking books into the horus heresy and now we're like four into the siege of terror like (laughs) i'm done waiting i want to talk about this dude but that is one thing to to remember is the emperor is an ongoing character and one of the biggest things that happens to him we don't know exactly how that happens the whole thing with the vengeful spirit his fight with horus unfortunately we only really know very small bits of for sure information and then like people have extrapolated a lot upon it and stuff can change and And yeah yeah, it's very possible that when his book comes out where he ends up dying like he just rewrites a lot of his own personal history in that book or something so so as of january 27th 2022 this is this episode is going to be 100 percent accurate canon all that um but you can't speak for the day after the minute it gets released exactly (laughs) then it's out of my hands what dw does with their i wash my hands (laughs) okay let's let's dive into the episode well well the emperor the emperor of mankind is the sovereign of the imperium of man and father guardian and god of the human race he has sat immobile within the golden throne of terra for ten thousand years Although once a living man, his shattered body can no longer support life and remains intact only by a combination of ancient technology and the sheer force of his will, itself sustained by the soul sacrifice of countless millions of psychers. But this was not always the case. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, the emperor. He's he's a mythical figure (laughs) in 40k, like... You can't be in 40K and have never heard of, of him. Of course. And, like, yeah. you can't even pick up, like, the main rule book without reading, like, the emperor on the throne of mankind guiding the humanity, you know? Yeah, it's always his quote talking about the space marines, you know, how yeah. he forged <laughs> yeah. them and yeah. what their purpose was. So. Don't you want, like, um, like you're talking about the future books about the emperor... Don't you want it to sort of remain kind of a mystery? Yeah, like if it was up to me, I never would have done any of the Horus Heresy at all. Oh, really? Yeah, like I don't think. <laughs> I think. We're, whoa, I, whoa, whoa. Yeah, like, no, it's just weird because I thought we were in Warhammer 40K, was my whole thought. No, it's just this. Warhammer now. Oh. <laughs> you didn't get on with the brand up. <laughs> yeah, no, like, that's the thing. Like, some of these characters, how do you do the Emperor Justice writing him? How He's do been you... such yeah. an enigma for so long. But yeah. That's what I was saying. Like, yeah. yeah. It, it's sort of like, I don't know, reading ancient texts where 
a lot of it, like, I don't know, the Epic of Gilgamesh or something, you're, you're kind of extrapolating and there's a lot that's hard to fill in the gaps and it, but it also adds to like the mystique the, yeah the mystique around um the whole story right so i don't know i i feel like they shouldn't over explain things with the well jordan prepare to plug your ears for the next hour and a half cause, you know. yeah no i think i would lean on that side too like i don't know it just uh, specifically you, even with his character yeah i prefer like there's there's really only one cool moment that i can remember coming out of like the last few books that he's been in um, I can mention it later. There's no reason to mention it now. But <laughs> oh, okay. honestly, like it's just the teaser. It's not relevant to yeah. the conversation or anything. Listen so. to the end of this episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you gotta wait to find out. This is the know? hook. Join yeah. the Patreon <laughs> for the rest of this. It's episode. the only place I'll share. It. Yeah, uh, yeah. I agree, though. I-, I prefer some characters living in mystery. Yeah. And for him, absolutely. Yeah. And in 40k, he's supposed to be a mystery. There is only one person alive in 40k who has a memory of being with the Emperor. We and we just talked about Yeah, him. we just did an episode on Space Wolves and talking about Bjorn the Fellhounded, Fellhanded, how he was alive during the Horus Heresy and the Great Crusade. Yeah. Um, and he's the last person alive to have seen the Emperor. And he hates talking about it. And him. he absolutely <laughs> hates talking about it. So stop bringing it up, everybody. Yeah, stop asking him. <laughs> So yeah, I like that. I like that no one really knows. You know, the Ecclesiarchy yeah. has built an entire religion out of this guy, and he fucking hated religion. <laughs> it yeah. was like his big thing. Like, <laughs> don't worship gods, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> that's life, you that's know? Life. That's how life works. <laughs> Man. Um, yeah, but uh, there, there are some things that I'm glad, like, we know some origins. I learned a couple cool things in here, and there's a couple of things where, yeah, it was over-explaining, and I'll point them out when we get to them. But. All right, well, let's dive right into his origins. So little is known about the majority of the emperor's life, of who he was and what he did before he emerged as the great emperor of mankind. Only the emperor himself remembers. A few pieces of information have come to light from various different sources and present some small part of a coherent whole. However, their reliability is often disputed especially as the emperor's tale changes somewhat with each retelling. <laughs> I think he's definitely a little bit victim of altering what he shares depending on who he's talking to. Yeah. He's it, a master manipulator and he always has been and he always will be. Yeah, and like I don't know if you can take anything the emperor says as actual truth. I I, like, I like you can probably search for the seeds of truth within what he's sharing. Yeah. But if you don't actively critique what he said and you under like try and guess why he said it specifically to the audience he was saying it to like everything about him is shrouded in mystery so yeah. um one thing too uh when the emperor came out we he was out in like rogue trader first edition there's like this book called like chaos realms and a lot of stories we're going to be talking about in this next little section comes from there but this is like uh that's old yeah, yeah. and like it is it still true exactly so this is there's a couple cool origins don't yeah. don't put any don't put any real stock into it you know who knows what they but believe. also you better believe you better believe everywhere <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta believe all the conflicting information yeah, at yeah. the same time at the same time <laughs> yes. yeah if you when you are able to hold all the conflicting information in your brain you at the ascend. same time yeah. exactly the you clock. become one of his actual servants <laughs> yeah and then you're allowed in the the room yeah all things are canon not all things are true yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> repeat that 10 million times until, until you get it you'll begin to understand life in 40k this really is a cult or starting <laughs> Uh, one of the more common stories says that the Emperor's birth, while a natural process, was actually the result of a scheme created by the wisest and most powerful of the living humans at that time, the a conclave of shamans. And these men, termed shamans by their society, were powerful psychers with great experience in the war, finding their souls and those of humanity endangered by the growing perils of the warp gods. These psychers decided to pool their power into one human a being they called the new man so i really like this is probably my favorite origin story of the emperor yeah um yeah and I, i'm gonna read the next part because i just saw a little bit but okay already having gained the power to reincarnate themselves and so upon death the shaman's soul would transfer to the warp accumulate power enough and then reincarnate itself as human 
The shamans entered a suicide pact. Which we've all done too as well, by the way. I'm in like well, 10 suicide pacts. <laughs> if you're in the cult of Mark, you're yeah, definitely, definitely in a suicide yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't even know it. Yeah. But we're, we're waiting. <laughs> and when you see the signal, you'll know. You'll know. <laughs> you'll know. By then the conditioning will be so complete. You'll just Yeah, act. you won't even question it. Yeah. It's just a sleeper agent at that point. <laughs> GW is closed. <laughs> Gunshots That's the around signal. the world. <laughs> That's the signal. You did it early, Mark. No. <laughs> Um, so thousands of these shamans poisoned themselves and sped their souls to the warp at the same time, presumably pooling their soul energy and using their reincarnation ability. They brought about the birth of the new man, the emperor, one year later to mortal parents on Terra in the eighth millennium BC. This is 100% my favorite origin story for him. I love the idea of these psychers who have, you know, been protecting humanity, you know, um, kind of guiding them, surfing through the warp for who knows how long yeah. that they've been reincarnated from body into body. You know, let's say o over 3,000 years, this one person has lived life after life, and they're yeah. watching the warp get more and more turbulent, how... It's harder for them to protect the people of humanity. You know, they're, they're trying to gaze into the future and it's getting more and more difficult. And then you start bringing that to other shamans. Then they're all experiencing the same thing. And, oh, somebody has a bright idea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if we all kill it ourselves. We Tim, can... you're always saying that. You're, you say That's that every... solution to everything. <laughs> yeah, and like the annual shaman <laughs> yeah. <play> meeting. meeting. <laughs> all right, and last item on the meeting. God damn it, Tim, again? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's the only way McDonald's is going to fix its ice cream machine is we all kill ourselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's such a cool story. Like, all these wise men, yeah, they see the future. They're able to uh, then re re reincarnate <laughs> themselves together in some weird superhuman. Yeah, they're, they're like, we're all in the warp. We'll find each other. Yeah. We will merge our soul spirit consciousnesses, however that goes. You know, it's warp shit. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> And they'll all be born as one new person. And this person uh, was born in a primitive proto-Hittite village along the banks of the Sakarya River, which was in Anatolia. And the boy who would become the emperor began manifesting his powers, quickly mastering the basics. Yeah, that's my favorite origin story of all time. <laughs> of anything. <laughs> Batman's pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> but I like this one, too. The souls of Batman's parents actually converge to create oh, no. Batman. Now I think that's not true. Now <laughs> I think you guys are just pulling fast ones on me. Batman was a precursor to the space murder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Wearing the armor, yeah. like super combat mode. Come on, Absolutely. guys. Absolutely. Uh, you know it's true. <laughs> Doesn't he use Goss-powered, or is it gas-powered grappling cannon? I don't think it's Necron Goss technology that Batman's using. <laughs> that's How where do you you're know going. Know? I just don't. <laughs> Call it a hunch. Terra <laughs> is a tomb world, and the Batcave is actually oh, a, a tomb of the Necron. It's true. All right. Well, moving on, I guess. <laughs> Go ahead, Christian. The Emperor's Purpose. While a young adolescent, the Emperor's father was murdered by his uncle. While preparing his father's body for a primitive funeral ritual, he received a vision of his murderer. When he awoke, the emperor calmly approached his uncle and stopped his heart with his psychic abilities, displaying neither sorrow nor malice. Sounds a little psychopathic, but... The next line's really, uh, really good, though. Yeah, it does sound psychopathic, but... According to the emperor himself, this was the moment that he realized that humanity needed law, order, and the guidance of the ruler. I feel a lot like that, too, sometimes. <laughs> the, I love... After a murder spree. <laughs> yeah. I really like this particular story, specifically because it sounds like the emperor is giving, like, an analogy. It's, it's a little too picture-perfect, hmm. in my opinion. Like, I was a child, I was manifesting powers... My uncle, a member of my family, betrays my father, and it's that moment that I realize, like, no, humanity must be guided. Like, I, I like that he's, I feel like he's sharing something with someone in, like, a way that they can understand. Simple, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, a lot of these stories are, like, yeah, 40,000, 48,000 exactly, years yeah. old. Yeah. yeah. Um, Is that actually how it happened? Were you actually super calm when you found, when you were a child and you found out your uncle murdered now, your father? To be fair, he is the emperor. To be fair, he is the souls of all those, like, consciousness. Yeah. Like, he could have been a very much, like... It's possible. It's possible. I haven't ruled that out. Um, but it doesn't really sound like he is 
he sounds like he's himself you know he's not a conglomerate of a bunch of other people giving him information like i think sure. their power he's gained but oh. i don't think their experience and memory a lot gained. of different <clears throat> like religions and stuff though have this like deific person even from a young age we've always known you were a god right you were so wise and you know i'm just saying it's it's a it's a trend it's a trope it's uh yeah i, I do find it a little odd that uh uh by simply having a vision he decides to be judge jury and executioner <laughs> and then we'll bring reason into this and then he <laughs> says we need law and order <laughs> yeah, yeah. I and i'm gonna go around it. killing people okay <laughs> <laughs> Just go that's my job <laughs> yeah yeah it's it yeah, he's a dictator he's a tyrant he's not a good dude <gasps> You take it back and you say five hail emperors. <laughs> I will not. I do agree with you, Eric, on, on some level, though. I, I do like the idea of it's like more of a metaphor. Like he sees he needs to guide humanity. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. I like to look at it like um, he sees evil now for the first time. Like he's committed evil. Like he up until this. He knows what evil is. Yeah. yeah. He's gone from innocence to yeah, exactly. the reality. And he realizes someone has to do something. Yeah. And that someone this can't me. keep happening. Yeah. I like the idea. <laughs> that... I can't keep killing people. <laughs> <laughs> someone needs to stop me. I do like that. Yeah. yeah. That idea that there's like a concrete moment where he's shifted, you know, yeah. like that veil of innocence is broken from his mind. And instantly he's like, okay, I realize that we aren't good people. You know, my parents have been good to me and yeah. like we see love, but now it, there are people who are willing to commit evil. Yeah, it's like a statement on human nature. Like even the emperor did a bad thing. Like and, and he murdered somebody, you know, like even all these wise shamans who got to bed together and reincarnated, even they were capable of evil. Yeah. So who else is? I like your idea, but I disagree <laughs> with that. But we'll spare the philosophical sure. diatribe. It is very, I mean, the story is, uh, and maybe to the point of it being somewhat mythic, is is very kind of hero's journey. Like he's crossing the threshold and, and uh, gaining these powers. You know, it, it's very, um, I don't know, archetypal in a way. He, he is his own teacher. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's all yeah. the characters. Yeah, he's, the guy. Yeah. he's the he's the struggle, the problem, the solution, the guide, <laughs> the dragon. The yeah. journey, yeah. Well, actually, there is a dragon. Oh boy, <laughs> I hate this so much. I hate... Okay, the immortal being who would become known as the emperor proceeded to haunt the history of humanity as a ghost, watching, waiting, and occasionally influencing, living secretly amongst mankind. He developed his abilities until his psychic might allowed him to gain knowledge of not only his own world, but the dangers beyond it, yeah. which is very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like back in like old 40 K they, they pushed heavy on like, yeah, it's possible that the emperor was all these characters in history, all these influential characters. Maybe he was Jesus at one point and learned those lessons and you know, yeah. It was way older lore that they were kind of leaning yeah. on that. And but... he always played a very influential, yeah. often religious character as yeah. well. But not tied to anyone. Like you see him in bits and pieces throughout history. Yeah. 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 And they could go more for like more behind the scenes. Like, okay, maybe he wasn't, you know, a famous world leader, but he was a guy operating behind the scenes. He's not Alexander the Great, but he's like an advisor to Alexander the Great. Subtly... He was his horse. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Philip was that his name? Fel no, that's his father. Fel ah, Safarion, which happens to be the emperor's ship's name, by the <gasps> way. It all makes sense. It Gasp. all tracks. We found it. <laughs> <laughs> the emperor that's was a it. horse <laughs> <laughs> out of the horse's mouth. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Uh, okay, perpetuals. Yeah. Uh, shortly after he left his village for the first city of humanity, likely ancient Sumeria. Uh, as we just mentioned, uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, during this ancient time, the emperor was known as Neoth. Neoth would come to learn about perpetuals, or perp perpetuals. Is that how you say it? Perpetuals. Sorry. It's supposed to be a perpetuals. Oh, okay, yeah. perpetuals. Immortal and uh, nigh indestructible humans and their plans of guiding humanity's evolution. He attempted to seek out and recruit every perpetual on earth to his cause making allies and learning many secrets along the way yeah it, these are these are interesting too because these are yeah just people that when they die they like they're like super wolverine essentially like they just regenerate regenerate from one molecule um so yeah not that anyone in these times 
could bring you down to a molecule, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know? But, like, you know, humanity, some of these people could be, like, 160,000 years old, predate even the emperor and stuff. So some of them could be pretty smart. Um, yeah, he, he finds a bunch of people, a yeah. bunch, bunch of them. I think this is an interesting, like, thing to consider. So the emperor, um, according to this story, he has already placed himself as, like, I will be the guide. You yeah. know, like, humanity needs this, and I'm probably the only one who can do it. But then, yeah, he might meet someone who's been around for 100,000 years. And this person, that's ancient knowledge. You know, that's, yeah. they're set in what they want. You know, they consider, they, there's no way they consider themselves the same as human. Yeah. Because how many humans have you just seen die, like, <laughs> dogs in the dirt, you know? You're you're above that. And I'm I'm interested to think how would he solve conflict between mm. something that can't be killed but doesn't agree with him with him in his like desire to rule as like the most important eternal punishment <laughs> is obviously the answer yeah. get his the liver plucked out yeah. every day yes. by a bird changed <laughs> to a <laughs> pillar exactly maybe that's where that myth comes from exactly you it's know? the emperor yeah. getting really pissed off at a perpetual yeah. <laughs> and chaining him to a pillar and then bringing us allowing a psychic bird to come, <laughs> and come and his eat liver. his liver yeah uh, a perpetual Erda met the Emperor, already a warlord attempting to accelerate human evolution and guide the race into a superior species and would join his cause. Yeah, so this is like a great example. Uh, Erda eventually even helps do like the Primarch Project and Astartes, like becomes like a That's very crazy. Yeah, significant um, person. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's another perpetual that he finds in this no next little section here that we're going to talk about. But yeah, these perpetuals, like they stay around and like some of them are even in 40k times still doing stuff. Yeah, um, kind of to answer like, your question, I, I don't want to spoil too much, but there are perpetuals that don't necessarily agree with the Emperor and are just, it seems like instead of opposing him because he's just so powerful, they just live their common lives and just try and let things just be. You know, yeah, try to fly under the yeah. radar. Yeah, exactly. And there's some significant, yeah. like, yeah. if anyone and who reads the Horse Heresy books, like I said, I'm not going to say anything crazy. Yeah. Even but. the Emperor himself, he's not opposed to sharing, like, power within his own authority. Like, he's willing to let people do their own thing as long as they, they, don't they still toe him. his line. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, there's, there's a lot of freedom that he's willing to give people as long as they're not actively against it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah, I get it. Like you, can, you can rule your own planet yeah. and do whatever you want on there as long as you still provide me with the ties yeah. that I require. Yeah, as long as I get everything from you that I demand. Right. I will let you live. Perfectly fair and reasonable. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you agree. Perfect governmental system. <laughs> well, show me a better one, you know? <laughs> okay, the next little tale we have of the Emperor and his upbringing is the Tower of Phoenicia. At some point in time, the emperor became a king and organized his own armies with the perpetual Olanius person, person, yeah, as his war master. Seeking to protect and guide humanity, the two besieged a tower in East Phoenicia built by the cult that would become known as the Cognitai. After their forces succeeded in capturing the tower, they discovered in a, it, they discovered it in Inakia and bleeding in the corruption power of warp of the warp yeah so they find this like tower and it's just like there's a cult manifesting it a bunch of cultists doing warpy things Olian Olian Olianus demanded the tower be destroyed while the emperor wished to preserve the knowledge it held within it in order to better protect against chaos in the future delusioned with the emperor Olianus stabbed his king <gasps> with a dagger and then uttered a line of uh Unu Unukia to destroy the tower and escape um this is a very interesting story, too. Is this like the Tower of Babel? Like, there's a tower that it, is bringing people together, and it has and knowledge. Anukia and, is, yeah, this language. So it's just covered in this script. Yeah. The idea of Babel yeah. and language. And, yeah. 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 I definitely see that similarity. Yeah. Um, the immortal be being who would then become known as the Emperor proceeded to haunt the... Oh, we've read that one, I think. I put that in twice. <laughs> that's but, how you do all your notes of double the word count yeah exactly <laughs> today I'll be sharing about the emperor the emperor will be the topic of today's discussion <laughs> long pause long pause <laughs> and um yeah that's like you any single moment in time according to probably his own history yeah. he's probably had a hand in it sure yeah exactly you know? whether behind the scenes or not 
But yeah, uh, this uh, guy, the guy who stabbed him in the back, is a perpetual, and he shows up too again. Olanius. Yeah, yeah. Olanius. In a very yeah. significant way, he's the one that I'm talking about. Yeah. So he, even though he betrayed the emperor, the emperor yeah. in this moment, he comes back as, I will help you and be your friend. Yeah. Uh, he might even come back one more time. We'll see what the notes share with us later. <laughs> Gasp. <laughs> he gasped. <laughs> um, we got another story, uh, an ancient device. At some point in Earth's history, the Emperor discovered an ancient device between, beneath the ruins of Asia's deserts and became determined to completely cut off humanity from the malignant influence of the warp. The first step of this grand project was to substitute warp travel with the webway, and the final phase would see the Emperor shepherd humanity's evolution into a truly psychic race independent of chaos, ascending to a level not even the Eldar were able to. This grand ambition was to guide all the Emperor's undertakings and would be the culmination of his planning. More on that later. Yeah, like the whole Webway project's a huge thing. Now this device we're alluding to, uh, the Golden Throne? Uh, So it's a version of the Golden Throne. Apparently, like, he remakes it and makes it into a Golden Throne for him to sit on. This device shared the same purpose, but not the same design i'm glad to know that ancient aliens <laughs> yeah. definitely existed on terra yeah. as well and yeah. we can see you know if you look hard enough you can find messages from them mm-hmm. even in our own history christian <laughs> ah. i just want to say crop circles look an awful lot like necron script <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> crazy yeah yeah um, um, yeah, the next story we got is the Dragon of Mars. Uh, we kind of briefly mentioned this, but at one point, the Emperor even fights a dragon on Terra. And this is like, it's described as medieval times. He has a horse. Yeah, and like he does a jousting. Armor. It's, it's yeah. a very classic medieval yeah. story of a dragon, <clears throat> like, terrorizing people. And he's like, I am the brave Sir Knight. Yeah. yeah. And people have equated it with the story of St. George. Yeah, oh. I got to do these references in this episode <laughs> because you have to. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he fights this battle and defeats him, and then he's unable to kill the dragon. So instead, he ends up trapping the dragon on Mars. I would love to be present. So he's like wielding a regular sword <laughs> and like regular armor. He's got his regular horse, Philip. I believe we said his name was. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> he cable. fights this dragon. <laughs> Everyone's expecting him to stab it through the heart, and he's like, oh, no, it's not working, <laughs> you know? And then just this massive fucking warp bubble comes out of nowhere, <laughs> and the Emperor's like, all right, peace out, I'm moving yeah. on. And just like, whoop, whoop. The farmer in the field's like, well, you don't see that every day. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Emperor, like, teleports back, yeah. sans dragon, you yeah. know? And he looks at the farmer dead in the eye, and he's like, no one will ever believe <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> oh emperor um yeah so this dragon um it, it's rumored to be actually a satan so that it that's why he's not able to kill it that's why i don't know it's like this powerful creature yeah the um, katan are supposed to be these actually unkillable there's only one that's been yeah successfully killed yeah they're so. like these like star gods we won't go too much into if you don't that. know what katan are yeah. by now yeah how did you make it to episode 99 <laughs> yeah how did you get all the way to 99 <laughs> who brought you here <laughs> <laughs> go back to the beginning and start over <laughs> But, yeah, so that's, a, like, a whole other big storyline. Some think he knew what he was doing, and he trapped it there because he knew he was Yeah, gonna... I was about to say he did it intentionally yeah. to spawn the I machine think, cult. I, yeah. don't, I don't even know if that was his intention, but it's, like, a useful object, you know? Yeah. Like, I can't kill this. I'm going to imprison it, and I might think of a plan for it later. That's how I feel Maybe about all 40, my bits. Maybe in 40,000 years I'll find yeah, a plan. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Maybe yeah. in 40,000 years there's going to be some use for this thing. Sure. But he he also has a very long view of everything. So I think anything that he deems as, like, interesting or useful, yeah. like, he's not just going to destroy it. He's just a hoarder. <laughs> All yeah, my but bits and my bits. Box, I'm entire, sure I'll use this eventually. If the entire galaxy is your closet, ah. y- you're not... You can't fill it. You, you got know? space for things. Yeah, exactly. You got lots of space. <laughs> space literally contains everything. <laughs> Um, yeah, but that's an interesting story. There, like, it's one of those ones where it's really hard to even. You got to make up your own mind. Is it a satan or is it just a metaphorical dragon? It's, or is it just the a mechanic. hero's journey? Just do you have a? Do you have a get? Like, what's yours? Do you think it is a katan? Is it the void dragon? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it just makes sense. Like, the void dragon's described to be like a master of machines, or you know, yeah, you just have to look at the motions. I, yeah, yeah like I don't. 
I, I'm not sure I in, I like that. I don't see any reason why there'd be a Void Dragon on Earth Because you're a Catan time. apologist, Eric. That's why. Just, but the, yeah. uh, the I'm convinced it is not like for all the reasons you said but also there's a, a point in time where there's like a necron force that attempts to like um uh, what's it called infiltrate they attempted to infiltrate into mars and we can only like why else would they be there if not for a Catan? you know sure. what level of technology does mars have that necron don't you know yeah so, yeah yeah i'm convinced it is but yeah. it's not my favorite and if you're a satan and you're kind of like fleeing the galaxy humans would be a kind of cool planet to Maybe it's because they're hide out on. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's just okay. like no one's gonna notice me here. Yeah, Maybe yeah giant freaking dragon god. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. He uses humanity's stupidity as a shield. <laughs> That's a pretty good shield. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next story. Moloch. During the dark age of technology, the man who would become the emperor traveled to the planet Moloch, where there was a gateway into the realm of chaos. The emperor entered the gateway and there made a bargain with the dark gods and emerged wielding a measure of their power and knowledge. How to make the Primarch. Yeah, I like that the Primarch project was not possible without knowledge that he bartered from the dark gods. Yeah, the way they describe it is like, yeah, he, he was able to then to channel warp energy into living beings finally. Like, just like the warp chaos gods did to him to overcharge him, that's what he now did to these to give him like that spark of life. Yeah. It, I also I like that this entire like meeting with him and the dark gods. I totally imagine. I don't know if you guys have seen Berserk. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you know the scene like on the hand where all the deities are like on the individual fingers. It's this massive hand and um, guy is or guts. 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 Yeah, he's like standing in the middle of the palm and these things are just towering over him, casting judgment. That's totally how I picture these like four chaos gods <laughs> standing over him and he's just a little guy right now and they don't fully understand and Well, yeah, and originally the deal was the Emperor was supposed to bring chaos to the galaxy. Yeah, he technically was like, I will be your champion. Yeah, yeah, chaos. Yeah. I will do <laughs> your bidding. Yeah. You know? And then they're like, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Big wink. Uh -huh. yeah. He's like jokes on <laughs> <up. I have laughs> the same thought. His yeah. <laughs> he just has his fingers crossed behind his back the whole time. <laughs> Because, however, the Emperor did not keep his end of the bargain <laughs> to spread chaos to humanity, and he became the anthe Anthema? Anathema. Anathema. Of the ruinous powers. Um, is it confirmed that he made a deal with them? Because I've heard also that he may or may not have stolen, but I guess if you make a backward steal, that's a way of stealing. <laughs> like, so... Yeah. Like, this has been written now and stuff. It's and... concrete? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, because it's not the only time that the Moloch Gate even comes up. So yeah. it's at that time, I think, where like in 30K they go to the Moloch Gate, and that's when his whole history with it is explained, yeah. I believe. Uh, on Moloch 2, uh, it's another example of him finding a perpetual and bringing a perpetual to Moloch. Mm -hmm. I forget the perpetual's name, but... Yeah. yeah. Aware then of the vast predations awaiting humanity, and in M30 he took his struggle out into the open primarily because of the ever-increasing number of psychers whose very existence endangered their species, which coincides, obviously, with the uh, Long Night. and yes. Well, M26 is right around when Slanesh, the birthing pains, and the warp becomes more and more increasingly unstable, and that's when you see, like, a massive spike start in, like, the birth rate of psychers, psychers in humanity. Pains. So they've had, like, kind of 4,000 years for the Emperor to be like, yeah, it's getting much, much <laughs> yeah. worse. And the Emperor's just like, mask off. I gotta take control myself. Yeah. Well, oddly enough, um, I don't know. Oh, never mind. You mentioned it. I ignore, ignore that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> the unification of Terra. The man who would later become known as the Emperor first appeared openly as one of the many warlords struggling for control of Terra during the latter part of the Age of Strife. This would be such a cool time zone, just like all, all these like techno barbarians and like. It would make an awesome tabletop game, which I, I keep know, saying, and you keep no, shouting no, me no, down. No, it no. would make an awesome tabletop game. Maybe a board game. I'll give you back that <laughs> board game, GW. <laughs> I mean, yeah. let's in terms of war games. Yeah. People love doing it for any type of like. We have Napoleonic war games. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna line up all my guys. You line up all your guys. Uh. Yeah. But yeah, like this age of like techno barbarians and like Mad Max, like Earth has been like 
burnt down years and years ago. There's, there's no, no oceans. water on yep. the planet. Yeah, it's just this crazy, like, there's mutants. It's a cool place. They're just fighting over our rock, <laughs> floating in space. Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he was at this point uh, just another Terran world, a warlord, sorry, uh, but he met Malkador, who convinced him to take the title of emperor. Yeah, Mal- Mal- Malkador will become like his like right hand man for like the next couple hundred years. Um, he, he's like the most powerful psyker that the emperor has ever met next to himself. Um, Do you think they ran a podcast together? <laughs> Probably, yeah. It's like <laughs> subtly influencing the world. They just kept sister journals, you know. <laughs> They both just sit, make time every night, yeah, and they fair. journal together. <laughs> Occasionally break into, like, the Sister of Silence underwear drawer together. <laughs> yeah, a little panty raids. Yeah, a little Why panty not? panty raid every now and again. Yeah. Well, bro- in their college days, of course. Yeah, they were bros. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in a mountainous region of Terra, there he would seek out individuals whose genetics he could use in his Thunder Warrior project, as well as offer services of gene editing the offspring children in the region to correct genetic mutations. Yeah, a very smart dude, but definitely an agenda in that, in his like, hey, I will offer my gene services to you if you have problems, but there's no way he's not adding things in there for his own benefit, you know? Yeah. He's bringing in a new world order (laughs) through gene therapy. That's a conspiracy. (laughs) You don't know that. (laughs) Uh, It was also uh, during this time uh, he worked closely with Perpetual Erda and some others on the Primarch Project and the Legio Astartes. Um, The Emperor undertook a series of campaigns against all the other warlords on the planet that would later become termed as the Unification Wars. During these wars, the Emperor employed several military formations that consisted of genetically altered or engineered warriors who played a significant role in his eventual victory. Yeah, like the one main example is the Thunder Warriors, but then they also had the Geno 5-2 Chiliad or whatever. Yeah. If you read the first, I think they were in Legion. Which uh, is, yeah, the Alpha Legion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah, he, he was modifying a bunch of people, you know, he didn't really uh, care too much. Correct me if I'm wrong, but another thing that was around this time were the first Custodes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, like I think the Custodes were made before the Thunder Warriors even. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah they're like, oh, I have always been... The- I think when he revealed himself, they were like always there with him. Yeah, that would make sense. He takes the title of emperor, and he already has all these guys yeah. behind him. That, Where did they come from? That's crazy. <laughs> Don't ask. How, <laughs> like he believes they must be absolutely perfect because he, he never altered how they were created or changed, like mm. made. You know, there. Yeah, there's a lot of mystery surrounding. Even in the custodies episode, I think we talked about like how they're different. They're different. It's not. Yeah. They're not like space marines. They're it's not. They like have primarchs. like bio alchemy. Like yeah. there's extra like sorceress things done to them. Yeah. And they're like individually crafted yeah. versus like they're not batch produced. made. Yeah. yeah. Not like Mark. Diamond <laughs> <laughs> doesn't that guy. <laughs> the Thunder Warriors battled uh, throughout the Unification Wars and united Terra for the first time in millennia under the rule of the Emperor. According to myth, they were all killed during the final battle of the Unification Wars, the Battle of Mount Ararat. And that's the one where it's the Custodes doing, like, the final killing of all the Thunder Warriors? No. The people, the barbarians they were fighting did the killing of the Thunder Warriors. Right, right, right. right. Sorry, in my mind. The killed those barbarians, yeah. Oh. And then walked out of there without a scratch. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I don't want to say two more. I might get kicked off YouTube if I say two more. Like, I can't. Yeah, don't spread misinformation. Yeah, don't okay. spread misinformation. Um, but they not all Thunder Warriors were killed, right? Some survived. Yeah, some did escape. Yeah, there's a handful. Yeah, yeah. Sure. and oh. I I believe that they were the reason they were definitely killed, or one of the reasons at least that's communicated is that they the Emperor built them to be only temporary. Yeah, like, the Emperor has, like, we, even in this small section, he has four very different projects of super soldiers going on, each one with a very distinct purpose. Custodes are, like, the perfect ones to protect him, because you need the best. Thunder Warriors, yeah, they're a little more violent and, like, unstable. He would just take the barbarians and pump them full of steroids, Right, yeah. You know, give them the odd surgery, but, yeah, and then, um... Primarchs, we'll get into that later, and Astartes, we'll get into that later too. But yeah, he has all these different super soldiers that have a very specific purpose in mind. Yeah, he, like, it fa- It feels like 
the technology has finally caught up with his knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he knew so much before, but what does it matter if you understand what genes are when people... <laughs> have medieval technology. Not, Not even, even that. Blue genes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't even... They're literally... Paralanders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a donkey. And that's that's your transportation. And he's like, hey, do you know about genetics? And the person next to him is like, what the fuck, Phil? Like, seriously. Hey, I killed a dragon one time. <laughs> no one believes you. Yeah, yeah. So it, he's like finally stepping into yeah. his realm. And that's kind of crazy to think about because if he was allowed to go further, uh, how much crazier would it have been yeah pretty crazy did something just happen to our notes it's fine. okay okay <laughs> yeah I, I, so, I don't know what happened i got lost here i'll read the next one okay. with this achievement oh man now it's skipping on me <laughs> there we yeah, go it keeps doing that to me too with this achievement of conquering terror behind him the emperor then set in motion his plans to take his purpose of uniting and guarding mankind out into the stars to unify with the bastions of humanity scattered across the galaxy. So technically, humanity had already put a bunch of ships into the void prior to this. Because this is around M, the end of M20s, you know, right before M30, that he's like, okay, yeah. I have Terra now. But prior yeah. to then, there was a lot of human exploration. Yeah, like they've already colonized the galaxy once and pretty much colonized the world, then got separated, then recall. They've done some stuff. Yeah, there was the age of, uh, what's that? The... The men, the age of... God damn, the, the AI. The dark age of strife, the dark age of technology. Men of iron. The men of, men of iron, iron. Yeah. yeah. Like, humanity was already, like, a galactic player at that point when yeah. this AI, which you don't hear in his story at all. Like, was he not contributing to the AI? Yeah, he what's just, his stance on AI? Yeah, yeah, like, he doesn't care about it, or maybe he participated in convincing everyone else that it's evil. Yeah. Maybe he's a reason the AI went rogue. Maybe he's made the AI. Maybe, Maybe he, he is it. AI. <gasps> <laughs> I can't go any deeper. I mean, yeah. that's about as good as I got. Stop spreading misinformation. Stop it. <laughs> the Great Crusade. And boy, was it, was it great? What a great crusade. <laughs> no complaints. <laughs> The Emperor prepared extensively for the Great Crusade. He had created a special astropathic corpse to link his eventual dominion together. Uh, astropathics are like telecommunicators. Very useful. And caused the creation of the Astronomicon, a supremely powerful signal device powered by the Emperor's own psychic might that would allow him to simplify and safer travel through the warp. It's often described as like that lighthouse. We've done an entire episode <laughs> yeah. on the Astronomicon. It's really cool. Yeah. Like if you're, you don't know what that is, just go listen to that episode. It's yeah. one of my favorite episodes yeah. for sure. There's so much like intricacies with like the, the at astronomicon the golden throne and the primar or the webway project yep. that's a lot of stuff yep. but yeah it all kind of connects and it's very cool yeah this podcast feels like that every other reference is like oh and then in this episode and then and you then, have to reference this episode. well now we have yeah. so many you yeah, know we yeah. can actually go back and reference our old the catalog yeah. yeah don't ever listen to episode 82 though <laughs> don't do it what was that one i don't know it's just a number <laughs> that's my favorite no <laughs> <laughs> Chief among his own designs, however, were the creation of super soldiers, the logical extension of his dreams, uh, gene troopers already under his command. He had uh, first undertaken the Primark project, the creation of 20 infants from his own genetic code designed to mature into powerful generals of his armies. However, this plan went awry with the intervention of chaos powers. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. Uh, other sources state that the Emperor's longtime colleague and fellow perpetual Arda cast the Primarchs into the warp to deny the Emperor his plans for them. While accounts vary to this exactly what happened, the end of the tale is always the same. The Primarchs were cast into the warp and thought lost. Yeah, Arda. So she comes up a bunch. She actually gets like really attached to the Primarchs and like she she's... if the emperor is their father she's the the geneticist that is their mother mm -hmm. and so... the gene witch i think they call yeah. it and what, what that's what i call my mom yeah. <laughs> so one night you know the emperor and arda is talking and they're just having a bottle of wine a bottle of wine yeah. the emperor's sharing his dreams like yeah man i just want to kill wanna... every alien in the galaxy like <laughs> with my just, kids with my kids <laughs> at my side every alien i just want to 
kill. <laughs> and what a great Ar- legacy. <laughs> yeah. And Arda just, yeah, she was like, I don't want that for my children. So it's rumored that maybe she was the one who scattered all the Primarchs into the war. Or, yeah, she, like, a la- opened a yeah. door or something, left the window open. <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps. For a little For chaos. a kidnapper to come into <laughs> yeah, the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing about the Chaos God's involvement, there's the thought that there may be getting the emperor back for going back on his deal with them on Moloch, if yeah. you remember. Yeah. yeah, so if he had made this deal and I will spread your chaos through the warp, and at this point they're like, hey, <laughs> you aren't doing that at all. <laughs> you lied to us. Yeah. We're the chaos gods. You, you can't trust do us. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah. And they're just repossessing what's already theirs, really. Well, so, this is part, I, I like to think that that's part of their great game. You know, this is like the first step in their plan to... Which I think the like the chaos gods have been planning for the horse heresy, like for a long time. Yeah, like they must know who the emperor is because the emperor was like diving through the warp, doing his old thing. Like they must have picked up on that from the very beginning. Yeah, and you know? and even if they can't recognize like how powerful, like they can't see that far into the future. Yeah, they must be able to see like the potency of his soul. Yeah, like the origin of it. Like okay, his body is only this old, but how come his soul is? hundreds of thousands of years old you yeah. know and it looks like there's so many put together so there's no way they didn't realize something was wrong you know? <laughs> yeah afterwards malkador and the others believe the primarch's dead or corrupted however the emperor sensed their echoes in the warp and knew they were still alive i don't believe he even tells anyone that does he no no he yeah he, he plays that one really close to the chest yeah because he, he's always like you fucks <laughs> what <laughs> did you do with my kids yeah well that's the thing the person he trusted had already betrayed him so yeah. he's like maybe well you know what they say else. in like 95 percent of all children kidnappings <laughs> it's the other it's parent one of the parents oh <laughs> yeah. my goodness the stats hold true so, um i do want to also bring up the fact that maybe she was influenced by the chaos gods too sure she's acting under their sway yeah you never know yeah, anything like, is possible anything is possible they, especially yeah. like in the horse heresy as well there's a little bit of time fuckery on that which <laughs> is super annoying and i wish wasn't oh yeah there was yeah so yeah i like you never even know what was intended to be something versus what was changed at a sure. later time and yeah yeah you biting your own tail and forcing yourself to become your own grandfather <laughs> to yeah you know basic weird, time stuff weird stuff <laughs> afterwards uh no sorry in the aftermath of, of these events the emperor evolved a new plan using the genetic material which had been derived from the primarchs he created a cast of warriors which he would possess some of the qualities of the primarchs this is always something interesting to me it's like he almost it almost sounds like he got this idea after they were gone or he had to rush it or like it's almost like well the emp- or the primarchs are gone yeah i'm what, still gonna make an army though yeah out of them. what was he gonna do if they were still there you know the the space marines can't have been an afterthought yeah but like maybe they were like maybe he got rid of the thunder warriors because they're too barbaric and then like he was gonna just have his generals lead regular armies just regular like, humans yeah maybe or, he, or, or well it does track with this whole like purity like i i suspect maybe i should say this for the end of the episode that the emperor like really believes in the common man he creates these mutants but like sure from your perspective looking up like oh uh space marines are so great and stuff but the emperor just sees them as tools but he really actually admires the human the noble human that has no modification and just is so like that's what he's conquering the galaxy for and the space marines are just tools to that end well i definitely can agree with that sentiment (laughs) But I think he also is recognizing that humanity is evolving regardless of whether he likes it or not. Like, the the Psyker revolution is happening. Like, sure, he might have thought one day he was fighting for the common man, but now I think he's fighting for a desperate well, survival. Also elevating the common man to become everything the man should be. Right. Mm, the same okay. way he was elevated. So, yeah, like, it's not like he's leaving you where he's at. He wants you to go out and achieve. Yeah. You have to put in the effort. Like I'm not an Uber bench or you. something. Yeah. <laughs> some, might, some might say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> These successors to the genetically altered warriors were the Legion Astartes, the first space marines of the first, first founding, and the emperor wielded, wow, wielded them as a weapon to retake the soul system. Except for the space wolves. Um, wait, what? 
He held them in reserve. Yeah. Oh, did, you, oh were you, you not even listening? Were you at the last episode? Uh, man, I tuned that out as soon as we hit the record <laughs> button. You know, if ever, someone said wolves and I was yeah, out like, of there. If, if ever I've called in an episode of Lorehound, <laughs> that was it. It's just like tinnitus the whole episode. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they drove Xenos and slavers from the moons of Saturn and Jupiter. And most importantly, achieved peace and eventual integration with the Mechanicum of Mars. We will talk about his encounter with mars in more in depth you know what i honestly forgot to write it down <laughs> well let's talk about <laughs> Which, it right now yeah we could we have talked about it like with on the, the martian episode yeah yeah so but yeah he it's, it's a really great moment because um i think like i think he's still just the emperor but he's still just a guy yeah and i think this one might be one of the first times where he's like legally recognized as a god <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> like like a, a group of people. <laughs> certificate. Well, you got the key to the sit to the planet, you know. Yeah, yeah. Or you got a license to be a god. <laughs> yeah. So basically, he goes to the Mechanicum on and, Mars. On Mars, and um, he encounters when he lands. He encounters a wounded machine, a wounded Imperial Knight, and he goes and he places his hand on the machine and he heals it. And the machine is now. No ha- longer has a limp and it's happy and now it's skipping through the fields of Mars. <laughs> is and Brant a god? Cu- it's, <laughs> it's cutting great furrows in the earth with its chainsaw yeah. Yeah. as it used to do back in its olden days. Yeah, and it's prime. Remind, have you guys seen that movie, Chappie? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, he, he, have, he, he heals it and then the Mechanicum, like, literally worship him as the god, as the Omnissiah, as this the guy who speaks to machines and can yeah. heal them and knows. Yeah, he's like one, he's the one portion of whatever they consider their holy trinity. Yeah. And yeah, and, and that was actually a source of a really big contention on Mars is many did see him as this omnissiah, yeah. this representative of the motive force and everything. And, and the other half were like, no, he's just a guy with powers and you've all been duped and you've been yeah. manipulated into yeah. believing he's a god it'd be weird too because like mars i don't think would have a lot of psychers on there i don't think they do i don't think that's like communicated yeah they yeah so like then you do see somebody like the emperor come up who is rocking some cool powers he's like whoa <laughs> okay okay why does he shine so much <laughs> there's no oil on him <laughs> I think one thing, too, that you kind of skipped over is the Emperor's, like, anti-religious stance when he was conquering Earth, which is comes up here. Was yeah. that... I'd, okay, I assumed that was more of a Great Crusade timeline than a... No. Um, the whole story of the last church was yeah. during the Unification Wars, which was a story I personally like a lot. But, like, the Emperor, while he's uniting humanity, is, like, stamping out all other religions. Yeah. Like, by sword. Like, <laughs> yeah. even people he doesn't really need to kill. He's just, like, ensuring it stays dead. Yeah. Um, so even as far back as the Unification Wars, he's very anti anything that's not part of the regime. He's obviously very science based, even though he's magic. <laughs> you figure that out, but <laughs> yeah, I, well, I think to some people, at some point, it becomes a form of science to them. Yeah, like, I, the Thousand Suns really exemplify that, and then like the word bearers take it the opposite, where like they're looking at the exact same subject. And to the thousand thousand sons, it's like a subject to be learned and experimented with. And the word bearers are saying, no, it deserves to be revered and worshipped. Yeah. And so I think the emperor, the emperor, sure. Taking the emperor of the room. Yeah. <laughs> the emperor views it more on the side of this is a tool. It is science. We can master perform, it. We can which perform is exactly these what rituals. his whole thing is. Yeah. We can right? perform these rituals and we can get the same um, like outcome every time. You know, yeah. it's like I'm going to use it. No, I'll make and it even safe. I'm going to trick the things that call themselves gods. Yeah, maybe they're absolutely. not really gods. Maybe I can beat them. Yeah. So yeah, that is a good point to raise. If he's already in like his heyday of stamping out religions, oh, yeah. he seems to have no problem letting the Mechanicum worship him as a god. Because it brings them into the fold. Yeah. And I think it was really important to him that he had like them on his side. Yeah, and their praise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, and the other kind of thing to bring up is, like, why he was stamping out religion. And I think for the most part, people might be tampering with the warp and not realizing it. You know, the whole thing about believing well, there's, in. There's many examples of, like, cults all throughout the galaxy that, like, don't know that they are chaos cults. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. We it, just like murdering babies. <laughs> it's not chaos. It happens more often than you'd think in world history. I'm just saying, carry on. 
Yeah, that's sad and true. <laughs> uh, with the final abatement of the warp storms, the Great Crusade began. The Emperor's forces rediscovered human worlds, cast out alien oppressors, and claimed new territory aplenty. Perhaps most importantly, the Emperor, leading his crusade, rediscovered his lost sons, the Primarchs. Scattered throughout the galaxy, the infants were found one by one over a period of many decades and reunited with their father and their kin. Yeah, the very first one, obviously, one of the most important ones, most pivotal, Horus, Lupercal, my yeah. boy. Yeah, I, I read something when I'm putting together these notes. Um, apparently, Alpharius was actually the first one discovered I thought, on Terra. I thought he was the last one. No, that's Omega. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I always hence get, the names. I always get confused <laughs> yeah. with that. Interesting. Yeah, so apparently... I didn't. I didn't click on it. I couldn't be bothered to learn about that because, like, <laughs> I already know everyone's Alfarius. Of course, of, <laughs> of course, course, he met Alfarius. Everyone is. You know? <laughs> so. The emperor was Alfarius the whole time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All were placed in command of the Astartes Legion, created from their respective gene seed, and played their part in the forging of the fathers of their father's empire. First amongst the Primarchs was Horus, said to be the first discovered and first honored, and the two fought side by side at the forefront of the early Great Crusade. Horus even saved the Emperor's life during the Battle of Battle of Goro. Now that's kind of like a debated point of whether he actually saved his yeah. life, isn't it? Yeah. Some people think that like the Emperor put himself in a position that would like let his son believe he saved yeah. his life. Oh no, I tripped. Yeah. Help, yeah. Help me, me. Yeah. Horus. <laughs> yeah. Like and first of all, is the Emperor ever, ever, even ever at danger of death? Yeah. I don't like, know. Uh the entire Setting a 40k, Eric, maybe? <laughs> All right. Well, Wait a minute. if you don't have a weapon that's been dipped in the power of all four chaos gods, mm. and you're just an orc. <laughs> yeah. Sure, you're big, but you're just an orc. Not even yeah. the biggest orc. Either. Like, we have psychers that are capable of destroying, like, emperor-class titans with a thought. Like and the, the emperor is leaps and bounds yeah. above them. I think this is just an emperor life lesson, you know? Just really... Bonding with yeah, his, I, I always I'm try to fake my death when I try to bond with my He's a master manipulator. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know, everything he does is designed towards an end, and this end is to have Horus believe that they have this really strong, well, tight bond. I don't know. That's kind of a cynical take on it. Like you could, like it. I have a child who's two, and. I'll let him help me, quote unquote, with things, and but he's not really helping me, right? Like you, you kind of, I guess it's maybe manipulative, but it's for like a purpose, right? Like you said, like yeah, so. it's not necessarily you're, you're you're painting it in a bad light, whereas like Jordan's like yeah, well, maybe he, he like Mark said he's yeah. teaching him a lesson. When yeah. you're that of meta, course he needs this, uh, <laughs> yeah, this encouragement, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he needs to be able to do this if I'm gonna make him more more master, you know. Yeah. I just but other people need to see him. I do think that. you're yeah. like I think that's correct, like what you're saying. I just it's hard to say like your child will eventually grow up to be just like you. The exact same potential as yourself. Horus could never ever hope to match what the Emperor is capable that's of. That's true. But Horus doesn't know that, and it actually does the Emperor a, a good favor to have him believe he might. Right? Like hmm. Yeah, believe you're a successor. Yeah, believe you have the potential. And maybe that's what backfires Nothing can on the stop emperor. You. Something that stopped me, yeah. you stopped it. Yeah, how great go you take are. The and again, it may not even just be for Horace, but for other people to see Horace elevated to that hmm. point. Because when he gives him the reins of command, well, that just sounds like everyone... more manipulation. Like it's very targeted. <laughs> He's like, I'm not I, saying I want it's not manipulation, this, you know? but yeah, it could have like a positive spin. Sure. It's all about how you frame this. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Propaganda 101. <laughs> Some 200 years into the Great Crusade, the Emperor decided to return to Terra and placed Horus in charge of the military advancement of the Imperium in his stead. Granting him the title of War Master after the Ulinor Crusade, the Emperor declared that the time had come for his sons to show him what great leaders they were. Oh, and what a great decision <laughs> that was. Yeah. <laughs> Only took seven years <laughs> to learn what happens. Uh, turning his back on direct military interventions, the Emperor then created the Council of Terra, the Imperial Tithe, and expanded the civil governing bodies of the Imperium before retiring in seclusion beneath the Imperial Palace to begin work upon his greatest ambition and the continuation of an ancient device he found long ago, a Warboy portal. Dun, dun, dun. On Earth. Yeah. I like yeah. that there's evidence of old ones visiting Earth. I yeah. like that the old ones, like, 
are this thing that you'll never encounter. You'll never see one, but you see their fingerprints. Yeah, yeah their like fingerprints. They, they their, did see their tracks after all. Yeah, so absolutely. Like, yeah, maybe they made that portal seed pissed onto the <laughs> primordial goo of Terra and. <laughs> Carried that's on. how they seeded it, you know. I don't. That's fuck. life for that's, you. That's life. That is how I believe life was made. <laughs> okay. Piss. It couldn't even have just been like uh, love juice. <laughs> no, Maybe just a, a You're fingernail. Or... <laughs> I mean, better piss than a dookie. <laughs> I guess. <What> is... <laughs> All right. <laughs> is are you about to question whether it's better? Would no. you rather? Well, I was be... just gonna say there's a lot of bacteria, which would actually be a, a more reasonable explanation for all of varied life. Would but... you? Would you rather <laughs> be? Listen, guys, a you are of... not taking my religion seriously. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are making light of it. <laughs> You're right. Definitely, I am. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Horus Heresy and the Webway Project. So. With the sudden departure of the Emperor back to Terra, many of the Astartes, and more importantly, several of the Primarchs, thought they were being abandoned on their long war. And that's a pretty, like, soul-crushing... Like, some of them went through some serious, like, mental instabilities, too. <laughs> yeah. so. 200 years of war will do that to you. <laughs> yeah, constant um, war as well. Some some definitely thought, like, yeah, shit, the Emperor's leaving us, we still have to fight, and he went back. Others also thought, too, that, like, we're almost done fighting. Like, we're nearing the end of the Great Crusade, and once there's no more fighting, then what does the Emperor do with us? Yeah, we're soldiers. I... What what uses are for soldiers in an era of peace? It's yeah. kind of their thought process. I heard this quote in a movie I was watching the other day, and it was, in times of peace, all, like, violent and dangerous men are despised. Mm. But in times leading up to peace, to make that peace, like... Yeah. Most of the time, you need the violent and the dangerous people willing to do those crazy things. And I think that's like a very common theme through a lot of different stories. Yeah. And it makes complete sense that these people who some even viewed themselves as like philosophers and sure. poets artists. and yeah, yeah, artists and yeah. study like studious and everything. So, yeah, it makes sense that they are questioning what is our purpose? Like now we understand it, but what is our purpose beyond it? Because what is my purpose? Yeah. I passed butter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to be decommissioned. You know? And then with the stories like the Thunder Warriors, which aren't public knowledge that the Emperor... But uh, but that kind of thought process might cross someone's mind who is of that thing of like, what do you do with a tool that no longer serves a purpose? Right? Yeah. Hey, uh, I know the Emperor made 20 legions, and I can name 18 of them. <laughs> do you guys know what happened to the other two? <laughs> I think the Emperor did something with them. You know, yeah, there's signs hard of... Hard to say. Hard, hard to, to say. say. There's signs of of odd stuff that the Emperor does, you know. Does he just cast them aside? Yeah. There, there's uh, even also with the formation of the Council of Terra, too, there's the idea of, like... We do all the fighting, we do all the dying, and then we just give over this empire to you. Yeah. I think that those who thought they might rule, I think that's a little bloated of their own self-image. They never... But those are the chinks that chaos uses, I, right? Yes. Like, can you see an emperor's children thinking that? I like, absolutely no, no, no. see it. I earned this. Now this is my kingdom. I, right? Like, the fear of what happens to them after... Like, that one, I think, resonates much more with me. Like, you are literally designed for a single purpose. Yeah. And that's the Emperor's, like... Like, that was his choice to do. Like, I'm only going to make you for one purpose. And don't think too hard about what happens when <laughs> I don't need this purpose anymore, you know? But the idea yeah. that, like, some thought they would, like, rule and, like, be given dominion over humanity. Like, that... It just seems a little too far in my mind. It, it's, I think it's case by case. Like it, it plays into the Legion's personality. Like what you're yeah. describing is a lot of what the Luna Wolves. Like what do we do when we're done fighting? Yeah. Whereas like I could totally see Emperor's Children being more like, no, we earn this. Now we're kings. And... Yeah. Or or even Ultramarines. It's like nobles. They're already nobles being inducted into the. You know, they just would go back to their family right. house yeah. and rule it. And even on top of that, you have a complex, a superiority complex, being a space marine, like. You know, oh, we're just going to give this over to inferior humans to screw up. No, no, no. I can do a better job. Even right. if it was like a noble reason. Like, no, no, no. I can do better than you. I'll I'll do it. Well, it sounds like the emperor. <laughs> yeah. But if they're made of the emperor's like will and vision. So it makes sense. One thing I will say is they're not a singular purpose in a lot of cases. Like space marines do and are good at artistic pursuits. And we see that. Whether or not that's like a, just a conflicting That wasn't narrative. what they were yeah, made yeah. for. Yeah. They weren't made to be painters and poets and things. But they... There but are if you can cases. see extra colors and smell them as well. Right, you can exactly. Draw a pretty sweet painting. Yeah, and again, there's there's evidence of it. Guys, every second spent 
painting a story is time you didn't spend honing your skill in, in the training. Combat. Yeah, the stroke yeah. of a brush should be a stroke of a chain sword. <laughs> That's right. It yeah. should be. It spilling should of ink be. should be the yes. spilling of blood. Yes. <laughs> All, right. All right. Same page. <laughs> In the final stages of the Great Crusade, the Emperor's most trusted son, Horus, succumbed to chaos temptation. Horus was told that the reason the Emperor had left the Great Crusade was so he could attempt to reach godhood, abandon all his sons, and betray one of the central tenets of the Great Crusade, being the denial of all religion. Yeah. And then at this point, too, there has been some, like, books passed around the Levitico Divinat Divinatus. Divinatus. Lecticio Divinatus. Yeah, where yeah. it's, like, actually talking about how the Emperor is a god, and one of the Primarchs wrote it even, and, yeah. like... And his yeah. entire legion and homeworld... <laughs> Worships him as yeah. a god. exactly. So now all of a sudden you're space marine you're like wait a minute i just yeah. killed a bunch of people for the exact same thing you just <laughs> are you doing just now said. yeah like like at least 50 worlds and we know that the emperor has no problem being hypocritical yeah like that's not in his wheelhouse to consider like he does he refuses to feel guilty for allowing the mechanicum to view him as a god yeah he's like okay it serves my purpose i will let it happen yeah you know so maybe these people like all these space marines like it's just one more red flag yeah. up in their relationship with their father. <laughs> grandfather? Yeah, grandfather. Yeah, grandfather. grandfather. Or grandpappy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> grandpappy used to fight side by side with us. <laughs> he had a flaming sword. Oh. Sure he did. <laughs> God, you're going to tell me he teleported dragons, too. <laughs> uh, Horus saw it as his duty to save the Imperium and turned on his father. Having corrupted half of the Space Marine Legions, Horus led them against the Emperor and plunged the fledgling Galactic Empire into a colossal civil war. This became the most terrible conflict in human history, and billions, <laughs> need I say trillions, yeah. perished as the traitor legions tore apart the Empire they had helped to forge. Sad. 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 With the Emperor still on Terra, working on his Webway project, and unaware of the looming dangers of rebellion, the Emperor's son Magnus attempted to warn his father of the coming slaughter, <clears throat> but his telepathic message breached the Emperor's psychic wardings at the Imperial Palace and caused a grievous malfunction in the Golden Throne. Yeah. Yeah, this Golden Throne is... This is like the beginning of the Emperor's end, Yeah, really. As soon as Horus breaks that, like, mm -hmm. seal... Sorry. My apologies. As soon as Magnus breaks the seals, like, of between Terra and, like, the warp, that's got to be, like, there's not really a, a clawback moment for the Emperor. Everything seems to slide very much downhill yeah, from that point on. Yeah, worse and worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, if in a reference to the last episode, is why the Emperor is just like, Go get Magnus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just fucked this all. <laughs> like 40,000 years. My life's You fucked work. me? Yeah. You <laughs> fucked me? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, okay. Distraught, the Emperor ignored Magnus's warning uh, of that his son Horus had joined Chaos, yeah. which probably shouldn't have ignored. Yeah. Um, Horus would never do that. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he ignored Magnus' warning and banished his son from his sight. The Emperor then dispatched the Space Wolves under Lehman Russ to bring Magnus back before him in chains. However, the now corrupted Horus intercepted the Emperor's order and changed it, instead ordering the Thousand Sons destroyed. Mm -hmm. And also kind of sealing Magnus in his fate. Magnus comes up one more time in this story, and uh, just remember, he was, he was shafted. Pretty hard. Yeah. I, I don't fully agree with Magnus did nothing wrong, but he is probably one of the greatest tragedies <laughs> yeah. in 40 days. You can still do wrong Next things to the Emperor and still get The Emperor tragedy? We'll get to, yeah. Tragic? Oh, yeah, oh my friend, it, yes. It's his own stew that the he truest, ate. <laughs> that is the truest form of tragedy, my friend. <laughs> that is. When you sleep I, in the own bed you made? The yes. ironic tragedy. <laughs> tragedy. Mm -hmm. Usually uh, in the traditional... Okay. <laughs> For the rest of the heresy, the Emperor was forced to deal with the Golden Throne's malfunction, which created a warp breach in the depths of the Imperial Palace. As demons flooded through the breach, the Custodian Guard and Sisters of Silence held them at bay, while the Emperor punishingly exerted himself on the Golden Throne to prevent all of Terra itself from being swallowed. Yeah, so the Golden Throne was like, is this webway portal, essentially, and Magnus broke all the warps, and because it wasn't ready yet it wasn't ready yeah. yeah no he was still working on it still doing the final touches he left the great crusade to work on this yeah. himself it's that important yeah yeah 
And yeah, Magnus came and wrecked it. Now the palace is getting flooded by demons. He got custodes and Sister Silence, like yeah. fighting in the halls. And, and uh, something to note is that this wouldn't, like, not everywhere that opens a hole into the warp is going to flood numerous demons into your town, sure. into your palace. But the chaos, every single amount of focus of the chaos gods that they have is pointed right at Terra yeah. right now. They have, like, in at whatever point Terra exists in the warp, if it does... Like, I can just imagine a sea of demons. Like, you, it, all it would be is demons. Yeah. And all of them are just pouring all their energy into breaking through yeah. and just assaulting and devouring this planet. Yeah. So, it's not just a little bit of demons. <laughs> you know? It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot it's like a, of your run of the mill demonic possession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. We're not dealing with that. <laughs> We're dealing with a lot. We're probably <laughs> dealing with, like, the most demonic forces ever gathered in the galaxy at one point ever yeah sure at least maybe until the cicatrix maledictum happens i'll allow that but yeah like anyways (laughs) while the emperor's attention was directed inward he tasked malkador and rogaldorn to deal with the outward threat of the chaos legions so while the demons are assaulting from the immaterium Mm -hmm. it was the chaos the traitor legions now were coming on the material plane to attempt to completely siege terra yeah and all the while, the Emperor's just stuck on a throne. And if he gets up, that web portal just, just, yeah, yes. just gets sucked into the warp, yeah, destroyed, it ripped like, in yeah, half. It's less, Who knows? less an explosion, more an implosion. Yeah. It's just like Ooh. a transformation. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Maybe the, the power of the Chaos Gods would just converge and cause it to collapse and disappear, you know? Yeah, Hard exactly. to say. Hard to say. Wow. That's a pretty crazy moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to take a quick little ad break. Um Here's. <laughs> we'll be right back. Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome back. Uh, thank you for that. Staying with us during that break. And yeah. now I think we'll just continue on with the Golden Throne and the Webway Project. For the rest of the heresy, the Emperor was forced to deal with the Golden Throne's malfunction, which created a warp breach in the depths of the Imperial Palace. As demons flooded through the breach, the Custodian Guard and Sisters of Silence held them at bay while the Emperor punishingly exerted himself on the Golden Throne to prevent all of Terra itself from being swallowed. This is another copy-paste moment. Everything is copy and paste. (laughs) I can't read, I can't write. With the war in the webway reaching its climax, and the fate of mankind would soon be decided, he ordered the Sisters of Silence to gather a thousand psychers across the galaxy and sacrifice them to the Golden Throne. This allowed the throne to be powered for a single day without the Emperor's presence, and he used that time to plunge into the webway and rescue the retreating Imperial forces. Uh, how many psychers, or, yeah, psychers, how many are there in the galaxy? More than a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> At least. Yeah. A thousand a day. But, are, are, they like, are they, like, rare? They are rare, but because when you're dealing in a population of, like, quadrillions if not quintillions Uh, yeah who knows how many humans are actually out there but yes they are rare so like it's like hard to find yeah a thousand psychers seems like a lot it (laughs) is like it would be a task you know like a a hard quest to do but my uh quick google search says one in a million are a psyker so, so even, it's even few. On Earth, so it's, when it, you're dealing with quadrillions, like the, if your odds of something are one in a million, yeah. it's never going to happen to you. Wait, if you're dealing with quadrillions of people, but like even on still Earth, isn't that is that seven thousand? Probably do like a quick quick yeah, math like on that or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, a thousand per billions or uh, or a thousand millions, millions are a billion, billion, and we have seven billion. So like there's yeah, I think that checks out. So we could last seven days without the yeah. <laughs> is what you're is what you're getting at, and yes. everyone should bring their psychers to us here. <laughs> we will handle them with care. We promise. Yeah, we'll but like, definitely get them back. Kind of to tie into that point, I don't know if you mentioned it later, Mark, but like after the internment on the Golden Throne, like you're having that sacrifice happening every day. Is it? Yeah. Um. Yeah. There is a section there of how like it slowly, progressively gets worse and worse. Yeah. Because and... you need more than just a thousand psychers soon. Yeah. Every day. Afterwards, the Emperor was forced to seal the web. I think you missed the line, unfortunately. Number two. No, no, I'm not doing that one on purpose. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) With the war in the webway was reaching its climax, and the fate of mankind would soon be decided, 
I did read this. You did read this. Yeah, yeah, yeah you did. Yeah. Okay, my bad. No, now I'm gonna go back to number one. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> go back to the ad break. Just skip, <laughs> just skip ahead two pages. <laughs> Afterwards, the emperor was forced to seal the webway portal on Terra by again becoming a prisoner to the Golden Throne. The emperor lamented that his great work was ruined and maintained that now that the webway project had failed, humanity was ultimately doomed. This. That moment right there is probably my favorite moment of the Emperor. Um, he's just, like, helped clear out a portion of the webway that the um, Custodes and the Sisters of Silence and even some guardsmen yeah. were fighting. And so he's pulled them out. They're, they have a final moment, like, of rest where, like, you can just breathe without being assaulted by demons. Yeah, because, like, literally they were in the webway for, like, I think years or something. Wasn't it, like, a seven-year-long war or it, some it was, shit? I can't like, even Like, it would have been from when Magnus broke the seal to when, like, yeah, the horse heresy time, happened. Like, it's all messed up in the warp too. Exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah so, so yeah, they finally have a moment, and one of the custodies turns to the emperor and says, like, what now? And there's a moment where the emperor just, like, hangs his head dejectedly and says, I don't know. Yeah. And that is, without a doubt, my favorite moment of the Emperor. <laughs> He's this omnipotent character who can do anything he wants and everything he does succeeds and he's just so perfect and he can never fail what's it feel like to be human bitch? you know huh. yeah like the the gary stew has like a flaw yeah <laughs> finally <laughs> like something has finally happened yeah. that he can't fuck his way out of i don't know you know that's always your solution to everything Eric. well yeah <laughs> it works try it <laughs> it works <laughs> The final battle, the last act of Horace's rebellion was played out. Oh, I think we missed the last chance for humanity. Oh, we missed one? <laughs> this time we, we did. did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. This uh, computer's a little finicky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it definitely yeah, I'm going to apologize for that. <laughs> yeah, that's of, not your fault at all. Lots Jordan. of porn on that. <laughs> Uh, the last chance for humanity. Maybe I shouldn't touch his keyboard. <laughs> no, no, you should. Do your keys gloves. sticketh together? <laughs> uh, the last chance for humanity. During the siege, uh, the Emperor deliberately allowed Magnus the Red to infiltrate the Imperial Palace, where Magnus came before the Emperor on the Golden Throne. Really? Yeah. That's an interesting thing. Uh, the Emperor actually projects like this barrier around the Imperial Palace when it's being assaulted, and Angron couldn't pass through it. Yeah, like demons can't. Nothing. Yeah, no demon, uh, no demon touched thing actually can. So this is before Magnus. I mean, because no, I think he is a demon at this point. Because like he, during the Battle of Prospero, he gets his back broken or whatever, and then he. F- into the, he does yeah. his thing with Zinch. Yeah. Okay. So it's interesting to note that he can willfully allow specific people through this barrier or whatever. Determined to go through uh, with his vow to slay his father for what happened with the Space Wolves and the Thousand Sons, Magnus powered up his staff to deliver a killing blow to the Emperor upon the Golden Throne. The blow never came as another one of the Emperor's son intercepted intercepted magnus eventually defeating and driving him from the halls of the palace and i was that vulcan yeah that's vulcan i I don't know how he got there he just does vulcan things he gets tormented for a while (laughs) (laughs) vulcan has his own side plot yeah yeah you know but basically he was there i guess my father yeah (laughs) Um, the Emperor's goals for Magnus uh, were for him to sit upon the Golden Throne to power the Imperial Webway, but his soul was in perpetual bliss as it drifted into the Immaterium along the Emperor to discover the limits of cosmic knowledge, but this fate would never be. I do enjoy the idea that the Emperor was just like, you're kind of just a battery, Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> have a sit. Like, have a seat, please. Sure, you're a little more powerful than a double A, <laughs> but you're pretty much the same fucking thing. <laughs> but I promise your soul will be in bliss as it drifts through the, <laughs> the immaterium. <laughs> the, uh... the safest place in the world for you to be. Yeah. To be fair, that does play into the Emperor's whole, like, tools again, right? Like, yeah. Are we just tools? Like, how can you ever trust this person? And then, you know further embittering people who are already angry at the emperor and then in, entrenching those that are loyal like no we are his tools which you hear a lot like yeah what are the in the angels of death we are his hands we're his will right like yeah. it's constant i think there are just some people who 
are bitter about that fact and then there are others who accept it as like this is my fate and sure. like I'm doing this for humanity someone had to like yeah. how could he have done it's the more great a, du- a dutiful it? approach yes yeah. exactly and you're right you know we won't have a place when we're done but the humanity will yeah you know maybe the humanity is the friends we made along the way hmm. <laughs> while and we exterminated all the, and all everything. the xenos we killed along the way <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Xenos. <laughs> People don't get it. They don't get how apocalyptic it is. Just murder everything you encounter, planet after planet, for 200 years. You that's don't lot, understand. That's a lot of death. <laughs> do they uh, Do they try to exterminate, like, non-sentient Z- uh, Xeno life? No, it's only intelligent Xenos. Yeah, okay. yeah. no. I think it's mainly ones that pose a threat. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, yeah. there are some, like, those megarachnids or whatever that they just wipe out or try to. Don't succeed. <laughs> <laughs> One of the only ones, but yeah. yeah. And I, I like anything that might be a threat, and they normally only, like, I think at, at some point they only focus on planets that have, like, strategic value or resources that they go, because they must not go after every single planet, because you would slow to a crawl. You know, you'd go after, like... It's tr- called the Great Crusade, Eric. Yeah, but... <laughs> it wouldn't be great if you weren't just crawling I don't even know if there's planet. enough time in 200 years to do as much killing across the entirety of the galaxy as they did. Unless they are, unless they are skipping some things, you know, like this is a planet that we might want later, but it's not a threat to us right now um, because the people on it don't even know what space is. (laughs) So we'll skip it. You know, like that must have happened. They're like stone age people or something. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Like they must have skipped some stuff. Yeah. How many, like there's only like 200 yeah. years is not a lot of it minutes. It only and, ended and at 200 years though. Be, oh, actually, but they were getting, they were getting close to the, to the end. end. Yeah. 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 Okay. But yeah, you come across whole empires maybe where it's like they just join and now you got a new hundred worlds and now they're fighting this whole space and now you're like, we don't need to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Section. We'll let you do this. Yeah. We'll keep moving on. Sure. Still a lot of death. Don't get me wrong. Uh, yeah, don't want to belittle the death. Yeah, yeah. No, of course <laughs> not. No. It's still a stupid amount of death. <laughs> yeah. One f- death is a tragedy. <laughs> a million is a statistic. <laughs> a trillion is 40K. <laughs> I guess. The final battle. The last act of Horus' rebellion was played out above Terra. As the Emperor led a desperate assault against Horus' flagship after the treacherous war master deliberately lo- lowered his void shield... That's an invitation for a final duel. Though, though the Emperor was a uh, being of unfathomable psychic and physical might, Horus had become mighty indeed, bloated with the powers of all four chaos gods and gaining the Emperor's own powers on <clears throat> Moloch. Yeah, he, that's cool. He went to Moloch as well. Yeah, he went through the gateway. Cool. He like personally visited all the chaos gods. Cool. After a tragic battle, and through heartbroken at the loss of his favorite son, the Emperor finally slew Horus through the struggle, um, let, left him to close... Though, though the, the struggle. struggle. Oh, though the struggle left him close to death. Yeah, it's the that classic... You wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked. <laughs> That's the classic, like, you perform the killing blow, and a killing blow is struck back at you. You're so evenly matched. Yeah. Classic yeah. samurai movie. Yeah, but sheathing the blade. But it is worth noting, though, like when the emperor wanted Horus dead, at least in older lore, when the emperor wanted him dead, Horus was dead. Like we have, it wasn't. He wasn't just dead. Yeah, he was scoured from the face of existence. Yeah, um, yeah, like look, this was what I was saying at the beginning. Like we don't know how this battle plays out. There's some, uh, some of the lore says that Olianus persons comes and shows up, and when Horus kills him. He sees his longtime friend die, and that's finally like, fuck you, Horace, now you're dead. Boom. But, like, all the lore, sometimes they say it's Sanguinius that that happens with, or a custode walks in, and that happens to a custode. Regardless, when the Emperor is like, okay, Horace, fuck you. Yeah, when he's finally <laughs> when he's finally decided that he's beyond redemption. Yeah. Yeah, that's when, like, he just scours, like, his body disappears. Yeah. And that's different as well, because apparently... They make Horus clones later. But you can't do that if, if your his body gone. burns away in yeah. the Emperor fire. So that obviously is going to change. Well, like, who knows, man? Like, To be you, fair, like, if have... there's a little bit of bloodshed, maybe on a ship deck. Or, you know, all, the all his uh, genetic children that have been made are starting. Right. Like, there's a lot of genetics of Horus running around. It's all I'm saying. <laughs> Lots you of know. little Horuses. Yeah. Little... One, at least. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, 
In this state, he was found by Wurl Goldorn. The dying emperor dedicated plans for the arcane life support machine, or dictated, sorry, plans for the arcane life support machine that would sustain his remaining cells for over 10,000 years. And he was subse- subsequently interred, subsequently <laughs> interred in his alternate version of the Golden Throne. And the Horus Heresy was over. Yeah. Wow. Sort of like a version of being mummified. <laughs> Absolutely. But while you're alive, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of the pictures. No, but that's artwork. the idea of being mummified is to like, preserve. Yeah, yeah, to preserve. But the, also, your mind is in there while you're like screaming your for all time. <laughs> that's why mummies are so angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's like, yeah. that's the end of the Horus Heresy, but it's also the beginning of the stagnation of the imperium as soon as the emperor like the visionary the All dictator the leaves progress and yeah. yeah yeah sad it's a damn shame it's a damn <laughs> shame let's talk about so his. much potential <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because that's a line that horace says oh really yeah when he goes back in time to visit uh the gene vaults on terra where he sees the Primark project and all his brothers laid out in their pods before him, he gets angry and he smashes his fist on the second. One of the missing ones. Yeah, yeah. it's either the second or the 11th, right? One yeah. of those. And he says, what a shame for the loss of my brother. Mm. What a shame. <laughs> Jordan's not the emperor. Jordan's <laughs> Horus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about internment on the golden throne. Enthroned within the life-sustaining golden throne, (laughs) the emperor's will has transcended his maimed body, now divorced from the day-to-day running of the Imperium. Do you guys think I should write, like, a novel or anything? You should call it Throne. (laughs) Throne World. (laughs) That's a book, I think. (laughs) It is. Carry on. Uh, Now, his will is interpreted and executed by the High Lords of Terra. His worship is regulated by the Ecclesiarchy, his law enforced by the Adeptus Arbites, his form guarded by the Adeptus Custodes, and his people protected from the whores of the galaxy and from even themselves (laughs) by the Inquisition. That was pretty good, actually. You should write a book. (laughs) (laughs) The Emperor is confined within the Golden Throne, vast biomechanical machinery forming the great Sanctum Imperialis, located deep within the continent-spanning complex on Terra known as the Imperial Palace. There, the Emperor's physical form is sustained by carefully maintained machinery and now failing machinery, I guess. Yeah. Like, it's, I think it's been remarked multiple times that... It's failing. Um, yeah, we'll get to it. Okay. There's some stuff about the failing. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, physically, the enthroned Emperor of Mankind is a ravaged corpse. The last surviving cells in his shattered body are sustained by the Golden Throne, providing an anchor for the Emperor's spirit, which extends across the entire Perium. <laughs> That's just nice. a, just a couple cells just a couple uh, it's just so crazy the blow struck by horus was so strong so perverted and twisted by chaos that the emperor who is a perpetual cannot regenerate come, he can't regenerate back from it well like, that's one of the theories is that could he regenerate if he's detached from the throne and they just have to roll those dice because the throne is maybe what's keeping him in this we won't get too far down that yeah, yet. 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 But but it's a conversation worth having eventually. We yeah, will. Yeah, Tales of the War, yeah, yeah. for yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that it's just so crazy that, like, they must know there's really only a couple cells that are living, and they're just doing their best. Like, they... There's like a little patch of skin or whatever. <laughs> a single hair living. growing in the... Yeah. Oh, my God. They wash it every day, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um... The Emperor and the Golden Throne continue to function through the daily sacrifice of thousands of psychers. While his body is sustained, his will endures. And I believe the current number is up to 10,000 a day. I don't think it's that high. (laughs) (laughs) 50,000. Can we do the math on that? 1,000 psychers per day for 40,000? No. 10,000 years. years. It's a lot of psychers. Keep reading. (laughs) Keep reading. I want to know what that number is. His (laughs) existence is said to be an unending torment with his every thought enslaved to the task of ruling, guiding, and protecting his race. Ultimately, it is only his will to endure that allows him to survive, as he knows his death would lead to the destruction of the Imperium and leave mankind without the guidance it needs to survive. Now, guidance, like, it's not an act, it's not a metaphor. He's talking about actual guidance in the warp. So, 
like one of the really important reasons that he's on the throne and he survives is because his will is directing the astronomicon which is the signal in the warp that allows his ships to sail through it and as soon as like you remove that signal like humanity is plunged into it's darkness, darkness yeah. yeah which is what happens on the dark side of the cicatrix right which yeah they but they're still to... there yeah but they're like ravaged and yeah, yeah, yeah. they're on. they're like if the humanity was limping along before yeah now they're on the back pedal and they're being pushed back like it's like there's no you can't get reinforcements as fast like your astropathic choir isn't gonna function as strongly so like he means like an actual guiding he's the guide for yeah. humanity and then you can extrapolate that to other guidances that may or may not be the emperor yeah if we it, go into there's like, enough visions of him yeah, floating religious around experiences that people have all across the imperium that claim the emperor spoke to me i had a vision and he said this yeah. and that and may may not be true we don't know but yeah. it may be true it's and possible it might be the, the, the emperor's least. spirit reaching yeah. out from the throne like you, I need you to do this. You, yeah. I need you to do this. Well, when you're powered by 14 billion, 600 million dead psychers, you can <laughs> reach out and touch a you lot know, of I'm things. Surprise that number is actually that low, to be honest. I thought it would have been. Oh, you more. want more? I want more. <laughs> <laughs> Let's up it the dose to 50,000 a day. <laughs> okay, I'm going to crunch these numbers. Let's see if <laughs> Yes, we can do it, boys. <laughs> All right. The 40K times. His will is omnipotent, extending across a million worlds that comprise his imperium. For 10,000 years, the master of mankind has served humanity, simultaneously carrying out a multitude of tasks vital to its survival. All at once, he guides his race through the emperor's turret, soulbind psychers, holds audiences with his most important servants, and directs the astronom astronomicon beacon that guides space vessels through the warp. The the soul binding psychers is pretty cool. Her soul bind. Um, what kind is it? The navigators, the ones no, that no, go no. blind. The, the choirs, yeah. Oh, yeah. the navigators have the uh, the astropaths. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they burn their eyes out. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. They, it's not intentional. It's just a side effect from the soul binding. <laughs> <laughs> They're not that cruel. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna lose your vision. It's, it's an accident, though. It's gonna hurt like a bitch too. <laughs> I like, like, even though his body is like dead yeah there's only cells there is something special about being in the room with his body like something that you don't really get on the other side of the doorway it's kind of like just his presence fills that entire space sanctum yeah yeah just breathe deep <laughs> just waft that emperor air and then into your body bam your eyes <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> It'll explode out of your head <laughs> um I, we mentioned this on the custodes episode but just on that note like the custodes armor itself actually like the 300 yeah yeah who are personally present in the chamber with the emperor's standing vigil like their armor blackens in his presence <laughs> yeah, it's like, like their gold it's just yeah. like assaulted with power yeah. and energy yeah is it like so light it just burns everything <laughs> and... yeah i don't know if it's like a, a physical property or just a psychic energy or what it is yeah. that's causing this effect but there's a real effect going yeah. on his immense psychic powers constantly keep the chaos gods in the warp at bay, preventing their intrusions into the material universe and protecting his people throughout the galaxy. I've always wondered what that actually means because they break through the warp all the time. Yeah. But could it be worse? It could that, always be worse. It almost, <laughs> it could always that almost be seems worse. like a, an ecclesiarchal propaganda sure. line to me. Like, the emperor protects you. If, yeah. You know? If it wasn't for the emperor, corn would be on your doorstep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the truth is, you know, put enough sacrifices on that planet and <laughs> Bloodthirster is coming through. <laughs> yeah. so, regardless of whether the emperor wants there to be one or not. Sure. So, yeah. Um, and on that note, too, um, is he still keeping the webwig portal shut as well i or think that get fixed i think that's a big portion of where yeah, his I, energy goes yeah. 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 yeah 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 okay just just double check so on terra definitely makes sense that he is holding holding that door, that door shut and keep yeah. in mind again that it's the level of demonic incursion that he's holding yeah back. and it's also deteriorating that's another thing like the webway portions in there are like collapsing everything's falling apart the Emperor's role as guardian of mankind seems to have been predestined for him. Without the Emperor, there would be no Imperium, little space travel, and no protection from the multitude of threats facing mankind. The Emperor knows that to protect his race, he must survive as long as necessary for the emerging race of psychic humans to evolve sufficiently. 
In the millennia since his ascension to the golden throne, the emperor has become a god to his people, the worship of him uniting humanity throughout its imperium. Superstition and dogma replacing his doctrines of the imperial truth. Yeah. Yeah, like in 40k, he's a completely different person than 30k. Is he even a person? <laughs> uh, <laughs> completely different corpse. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to go and just touch on the Golden Throne, the Webway Project, and the Astronomicon real quick. But I really do, like, not Eric like we've said, touched on it at all throughout yeah. this episode. <laughs> like, but go listen to, like, the actual Astronomicon episode and, like, we talk about they the go Golden Throne the and, like, how it kind of all plays. Because yeah. they're kind of, they're all connected. Really. They're all connected, yeah. whether intentionally or not. Some, they're all connected. At the very least, they're all connected through the Emperor, yeah. you know? So we'll kind of pack that just real quick here. Uh, the Golden Throne was thought to be an ancient relic discovered long ago by the Emperor. It was eventually to be used for providing human access to the Elder Webway. Uh, having this fixed point of entry was meant to free humanity from its reliance on warp ships and astro telepathy. telepathy. Um, since the original webway was built of a, a physically resistant material which humans could not replicate, the Emperor used his powers via the Golden Throne to protect the human-built section from the warp. The Golden Throne is also connected to a massive warp beacon known as the Astronomicon, which generates a system of signals and making it faster than light travel in the Imperium possible. Finally, the Golden Throne was uh, fitting with fitted with stasis fields and uh, psi fusion reactors, and now acts as a life support system for the emperor. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Vulcan is the one who made the changes to the Golden Throne to allow it to actually be a life support system. No, I thought the emperor dictated to Rogel. Oh, maybe I then think Rogel he, Dorn I then think, told Vulcan, and Vulcan did it. Then I think yeah, the emperor maybe. dictated to Rogel Dorn more about the defenses of Terra, and. Because I don't remember, I'm I totally may be wrong. I don't know. There's, like you said in the beginning, there's so much weird confusion around a lot of stuff that happens in yeah. this time. But um, I I'm pretty sure I saw that Vulcan actually made changes. I think to he the fixed it. No, 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 he comes in and fixes it. I think like much later. Like, well, I think he also does that. Like that's after War of the Beast time, right? Yeah, yeah I think so. that's what yeah. I'm thinking. Of. Yeah, um, Vulcan does a couple things a couple different times. Vulcan, well, well, Vulcan lives or Vulcan does? Vulcan does. He, Vulcan <laughs> does. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. Uh, by the late by late M thirty six, the Golden Throne began to require more and more sorry <clears throat> sacrifice of psychers to remain functional. By early M forty one, four times the amount of psychers were required. <gasps> To maintain optimal power levels of the throne. Okay, Just multiply so, the 16 billion by four. Yeah, so we have 1,000 years of at least four times psycho output. Like All that. right. <laughs> Go back to the formula. <laughs> Adjust. Well, you just Adjust. divide it by four, and then that's how it would be in the last one year. Or 1,000 years. Dun, dun, so dun. at least four billion in one year. It's hmm. a lot. <laughs> that's still nice. not what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> in the last year of M41... Tech priests discovered failures in the mechanisms of the Golden Throne that are far beyond their ability to repair. Little does anyone know, during the Horus Heresy, Vulcan installed a surprise on the Golden Throne for the forces of chaos. This device acts as a dead man switch, which would destroy not only the Imperial Palace, but also all of Terra, should the Golden Throne fail. This would deny the forces of chaos from ever taking the throne world. <laughs> nice. Okay, so we definitely know Vulcan was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vulcan does. Vulcan does. We... <laughs> um, yeah, so the Golden Throne has like four different parts. Like it originally was found as this ancient device that was then remodified into an actual throne. Then eventually the Emperor like ties the Astronomicon to it so he can still sit there, guide the light of the Emperor. But like the Astronomicon is like across the planet yeah it's it's like a ball yeah with a bunch of psychers inside of it focusing yeah on some energy yeah it's like on the top of some crazy mountain yeah. or something like but it's a different thing and then eventually also it was turned into life support system like we know and then also eventually it was turned into the dead man switch that just would blow up all of terra so we're looking forward to that 
<laughs> do you do you think with Games Workshop writing that uh, tech priests discovered failures in the mechanism of the Golden Throne that are far beyond the ability to repair, is that them setting up a failure in the Golden Throne? Because they seem in the past six years they have advanced the story more than they did in like the last twenty some <laughs> years. Yeah. So do you think that they are going to explore that? No, because they wrote that part when it was always supposed to be like the minute to midnight. Clock is about to strike 12. Everything is going wrong. Will it? Won't it? Yeah. So, no. Absolutely not. You don't think so? Well, it's game over, man. At that point, like, the Emperor gets up. Oh, great. Or the Emperor dies. No, no, no. Oh, he would great. die. Like, 40K is not 40K anymore. Yeah, man. yeah, exactly. Like, I think they would have to do so much stuff before they brought the Emperor back. Like, you know, you'd have to bring all the fucking Primarchs back. And, but hmm. then I'm long gone. So <laughs> well, know. we're dead. In another country, point. even. Yeah. How, many, how many book series would that take? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Took us this long to get through the Horus Heresy. Oh my. <laughs> this next series is called The Rebirth of the Primarchs, and we are so excited to bring you a 600 book <laughs> series. <laughs> That's fucked. Um, yeah, so that kind of concludes like the Emperor, his deeds, what he's up to, what his he's life, done, his history, his yeah. death. Not, all of it can't really be counted on for truth. <laughs> Everything that we just said in the last hour and a half, yeah, it's I wouldn't tell anyone made else up. that. Might be made up. Might very well be Christian. Don't tell that to people. <laughs> Got a good thing going here. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we're going to talk about his personality next. Uh, I wrote a couple of things. Well, he's kind of a dick. Um, if you read any book with him, he's always kind of just like this arrogant dickhead. He's like, too busy thinking about the needs of billions and trillions yeah. to care what your individual wants or desires are. Yeah. And it is a dick, but I think it's a necessary dickness. <laughs> like, I don't think so, but he is a dick, but he's not a hundred percent an asshole. <laughs> you know? Ah. Just the scrot in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. He, he does a bunch of crazy things. Like, even the way he treats, like, the other Primarchs. Some of them he's super friendly with. Others he's, like, intentionally hostile with. Some he'll do competitions and drink with. Others it's just, like... Two things, I'll but, say. But is it all, sorry, uh, is it all, like, calculated? Like, he does it on purpose? Or is he a little bit, like, impulsive? And... Bipolar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like he's a bunch of different souls in one body. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's a good question for the Tales of the Warm, because we'll get into it a little bit more. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more of some of the Okay, because I just want to challenge your dickishness, so. Yeah. Uh, um, he's I'll, also... I want to uh, present my dick to your dick <laughs> and compare like. Oh, a dick measuring contest, <laughs> yes. okay. You're going to lose, Christian. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Whose? His or mine? Yours. <laughs> um, the Emperor is also unpredictable. Um, like, he just does a bunch of things where you think, well, maybe. I don't think have he told that. anyone that he was about to leave the Great Crusade yeah. until he was like, <laughs> peace. See ya. <laughs> Seems like a dickish thing to do to just <laughs> abandon your project. Yeah. Some would say also ah. <laughs> a little unpredictable. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's clearly a megalomaniac. Like he just, <laughs> everything is just about him and what he wants to do. It doesn't even yeah. matter that those other perpetuals that are older than him and are still alive yeah. to forty k times. It doesn't matter what they. Think. His vision of what humanity <laughs> needs to be is the right vision, and he doesn't care what you think and what your opinions are yeah. because. He, like, no one could know better than him. Yeah. It's, like, definitely some narcissism in there as well, that he is the smartest, he is the best suited, no one else could possibly approach him. Uh, on the flip side, though, like, isn't that earned, though? Like, is he wrong? I'm not saying whether, it, like, it's right or wrong, but that's how he is. Sure. <laughs> um, one th good thing about him, though, is he's very charismatic. You know, he's got a fantastic <laughs> smile, great laugh. You say charismatic and Most. I say manipulative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's funny. The emperor is always described as char charismatic. Like but most demanding. dictators are people, pretty charismatic. Yeah, yeah. Like, most cult leaders are. <laughs> people yeah. absolutely adored the emperor. Like you would scream and cry and yeah. you, you'd feel like he's probably it's a religious experience it to is. like You're, encounter him. Yeah. yeah. Who Did knows? they though? Because people allegedly adore Kim Jong il. Ooh. I right. would is that the propaganda? Yeah, the propaganda. <laughs> or is that because like say. you live in a society where if you don't 
uh, you express <laughs> yeah, express your ador- adoration. For I him. fully <laughs> believe that he would he could manipulate entire <clears throat> populations and planets through warp powers. That he is like, I'm gonna bathe this planet in adoration. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, if you don't worship me, you might get shot, but you're gonna have no choice because it's just gonna suffuse Impulsive. your entire soul with the need to just fucking get up and dance. Exactly. That's what you're making me want to do yeah, right yeah. now. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah, he does yeah. the opposite thing, like when he chastises the word bearers, right? He makes them all kneel exactly, him in the yeah. dirt. So like, he can like put out massive fields of energy to like force people to do what he wants. He's a manipulator. Yeah. Some people call it charismatic, some people just call it warp manipulation <laughs> at the very yeah. core. There's yeah. a really cool Brandon Sanderson novel um where they people like ingest metals and they like burn these metals in their body to have like an effect. And one of them is she uh they can actually manipulate people's moods as they burn these metals inside. And that's exactly how I cool. see it. He's just like putting this force field out. He's like, I want everyone like I'm I'm delivering a rousing speech and we're about to go campaign. So I want everyone to get filled with bloodlust. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what he's projecting yeah, out. Yeah, but yeah. now, like, um, this is a vigil over some great hero of the Imperium we lost. Like, hey, everyone's going to be super sad, but I'm going to compound that. And I'm going to project, like, a depressed sadness and wailing over it. So yeah. I like to think that that's definitely within his capability. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah. So he also cares about humanity. That's nice. That is a personality to trait like he is driven solely for the fact that he wants humanity to survive he yes. cares about what happens and him. he's so convinced that like it will not survive unless these necessary steps are taken yeah. it's for your own good the classic mantra of every good dictator yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and then yeah there's kind of two things like there's the emperor during the great crusade and then there's the emperor in 40k so during <laughs> the great crusade uh the emperor was a lot warmer Towards people, especially... His body was definitely... Because of <laughs> pumping blood. When you could hug him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, but he even went as far to call his um, Primarch sons. <coughs> where in 40k, he does not. He calls them tools. Um, and it's like this shift. So when Reboot Gilliman meets the Emperor in M41, he was disturbed by what has, had become of his father's mental state. He felt that the Emperor had lost all pretenses of humanity and gave off an overwhelming sense of coldness. Like, he just wasn't there anymore. All that was holding him together was just that drive to keep humanity going. Yeah. Like, there's no... I think that argument in the after interment, um, like, that coldness... Like, Roboot saw him when he was flesh and blood. Yeah. That's the last time he would have seen him. And now he's seeing him where every single shred of his will is devoted somewhere else. Yeah. Like, it's possible that he just can't afford to show his, like, children. Yeah. But I, I think it it would be a decline. Like, I 100% agree with the fact that, yeah, he would change over 10,000 years of constant torture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. for people that if he was witnessing them... They are doing dumb shit all the time. <laughs> and he is suffering for those people, and they don't care at all. I, so, yeah, I would be a little upset if I was the Emperor, too. Two counterpoints. One, there's a whole thing about how the Emperor portrays himself to other people, and there are mentions of other people getting that cold vibe from him, even when he was alive. Yeah. So I don't think it's strictly a 40K, 30K dynamic. Too. Yeah, it... And, it gets, and that's when it gets messy. The emperor presents himself differently to different people, so it's hard to pin down what is the real emperor and yeah. how much are you projecting and, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then uh, the other thing about Gollum and Gollum's assessment, we still don't even know, like, did he talk to the emperor? Did he not? He went into a room and he says he did, but yeah. then you know, like... They say he was mind-wiped after. He says he doesn't even know. Yeah. Like, Who so, was... Gulliman was mind-wiped yeah, after? Yeah, Gulliman says he doesn't really remember what happened in there. He just remembers, like, pretty much what I wrote down. Yeah, what's, like, what's the point? Do you, do you not remember even talking about this? I don't know what the point of bringing Reboot Gulliman back to the setting was, Eric. I really... <laughs> I really <laughs> That's don't... a better question for the I, people I, that why you want to talk to... I really don't oh, I know, actually. It's It's money. <laughs> the answer is money. Ah, and that's what the emperor is after too. The answer has always been money. Give us that imperial tie. <laughs> yeah, it's all a big elaborate scam. The emperor's like off in the Bahamas somewhere <laughs> Just... with a farmer's wife. Oh, farmer's yeah. wife. Yes. Yes. Raking in those imperial back. tithes. <laughs> it all comes back. Oh man. Uh, yeah. So his personality, like Christian said, it's hard to pin down. Like he is a different person to different people. 
Um, and, Horace and him had a very good relationship. Man, <clears throat> it's manipulative. Yeah. It's nothing it, if not manipulative. Yeah. I, I, it is. No, can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, I'm not saying trust, it's, no, Can you trust yes. any of the caring feelings he had when he Yeah, go, no, I get that. I get that. But if it's for a good cause. Oh, it's totally fine then. No, no, no. Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it depends on what, what is morality. Moving on. <laughs> I don't know. Morality is whoever has the biggest gun. Well, and the emperor is the biggest moral person. Yeah, he makes the judgment of what's moral and not. <laughs> yes. Just like when he was a little boy. Great brave. crusade. Great well, time. Great time. <laughs> Speaking Greatest. of the biggest gun, let's talk about what the emperor, like what we've witnessed the emperor could do, what he was capable of. How big was his dick? I mean, his <laughs> gun. <laughs> yeah. Like, the emperor was a master psyker, so we know that. But here's some cool things that he yeah, he, he, he had a genius level intellect with expertise in any number of areas, uh, whether it's genetics, philosophy, statecraft, military tactics, a variety of technologies, understanding of space and the void beyond what space we consider. Time. Understanding yeah. of the warp. Yeah, absolutely. Relations yeah. To, like, Even old one technology such yeah. as the webway he was familiar with. Yeah. Like, Truthfully, I don't think there was a human subject that he wouldn't know everything there is to know about it. Yeah, yeah. He would be along the journey as these things are discovered. Like, he's yeah. there as people are discovering, you know, um, black holes. He knows all about <laughs> them. You know, he, he's there as they're discovering quantum physics and mechanics. Yeah. So. I, I really like that picture you put of, like... Um... The Emperor's time was now. It's like he knew all this technology. He knew geneticists. Like he could obviously like, unwrap the mysteries of his body just through psychic knowledge alone or yeah. psychic investigation. Yeah, he but, can yeah. see the individual cells. <laughs> exactly. But how do you tell someone? They have <laughs> exactly. Cells? Yeah, I really like that image that, yeah, he was just a man out of his time, but eventually. He, you know, time caught up with him. Time caught yeah. up with him. It's just a matter of waiting and waiting for yeah. the right moment. And yeah, that's him planning the Catan. Yeah, he's like, okay, I can't use this now. Yeah, but there's going to be a time, probably, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> when I can use it. So. Yeah. How do you think? Just in the topic of science, how do you think he stacks up against, say, like the Necron? As a genuine, I'm not like taunting. I don't but, think like, that he like. Okay, the Infinite and Divine is like a. Have you read it? No. Okay. It is such a good book. And I'm not just saying that as a Necron fanboy. Yeah, I've, I've heard that a lot from people. Yeah, but, like, yeah. there's many books in 40K I'm not scared to shit on. <laughs> but that book, like, the perspective that Necron have over, like, time and space and technology, like, they actually are performing, like, true magic because it's at their own knowledge. It's not borrowing power from somewhere else. Yeah. And even with the Emperor, like, he discovers a lot of Dark Age tech. Stuff that he didn't necessarily have a no. hand in. Okay. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Like, he, it was a genuine question of, like, yeah. where, we, does, where does he fit on the scale of I think the all Necron, knowledge that could exist I think in that science? in terms of Necron technology, they still outclass him. I'd say so. Um, yeah. They don't have, like, fucking star cannons or whatever. <laughs> black hole guns. I don't even know. The, Aust the oh, Fuck, there's a Necron device where it's a star map and they can just <laughs> destroy a star by touching it on that map. But the Ember can do that with his mind. <laughs> can he? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> can he make that device so anyone can use it? The Great Crusade would have been a lot shorter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, interesting thing, though, about the Emperor. So do you think that he even doesn't understand some of the Dark Age technology? Because if he can communicate to people... They he can... was there when Dark Age technology exactly, was created. Yeah. But listen, yeah. like if the Golden Throne is failing and he can communicate to people, can they not tell him what the problem is? <laughs> and he can say, hey, use this <laughs> wrench to screw that bolt in a little tighter. No. <laughs> wow, well, all right. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, like you would think he would be able to, but like he found this device <laughs> thousands of years ago does he really know how to make it work and then he's so that's maybe like, like a gap yeah. in his knowledge yeah you know? i'd say like yeah he's not all knowing i agree he's not omnipotent but i think in any of the human subjects sure. he knows everything sure sure all right as a psyker of such power and potency he defies classification uh to put it simply he can among other things teleport himself raise the spirits of the dead as an army of vengeance repair damaged machines, heal injuries, read minds, communicate telep telepathically, enhance his own body with psychic powers, 
unmake lesser warp entities and even stronger warp <laughs> entities like a demon primarch yeah. with his presence he can create and maintain a small sun with his psychic powers he can blast <laughs> off psychic energies create beacons with himself like he can he can place his own soul into the warp and like travel him and malkador do that on many occasions yeah he even did it with horus a lot while yeah. horus was be like beginning his um advancement to the siege of terra him and yeah it... he can teleport into the farmer's wife no when... <laughs> no he's into the farmer and then he goes into the farmer's wife well he can teleport mid mid <laughs> mid thrust yeah, yeah no, <laughs> he he's damper he can do whatever he wants he comes in and out as every thrust <laughs> <Does he> like... <laughs> maximum enjoyment <laughs> only for the good zero time. effort <laughs> 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 that's messed up <laughs> he's really good at baking cakes <laughs> his psychic powers were so great that its energies altered his genome and physiology in the womb and rendered him immortal do you like, think there's a level of perpetual beyond perpetual like perpetuals can be killed yeah and i think even perpetuals have different levels amongst themselves like, just like speed yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But in, like, the, in the end, they technically could all regenerate from the same thing. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah unless you get hit by, like, that Vulcarite. A fulgurite. Fulgurite. Yeah. Yeah, Fulgurite. Which is, incidentally, wasn't it made with the Emperor's own power? So, I think the first time it was, it was an accident. But I think it's technically, as, as long as any warp lightning enters sand, you can create Fulgurite. Like, it's way more stupid common <laughs> than you than would it, think. Than it should be. A god-killing material yeah. it's just everywhere <laughs> uh the emperor is capable of stopping time for undetermined lengths and guiding his servants through manipulation sheer influence uh if you believe the tarot is actually a part of him then he is constantly like millions of times a second because the tarot's yeah. got to be pulled so often <laughs> yeah yeah he's constantly like manipulating and trying to like guide humanity through every this time thing. he's just like yeah the cards are saying you should join the guard <laughs> 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 yeah, the cards are saying you should charge that Termagon. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh. um, he seems to project a glamour as everyone who interacts with him experiences something different with the only exception perhaps being Blanks. Yeah, there's a couple times Blanks have said that they can see the true face of the yeah. Emperor. Yeah, I forget exactly how that's worked. But then can we but... trust them? So like, do they... I had a... Is the Emperor projecting something on them too? Like he's so powerful, he overpowers their blankness? Because yeah. we remember we've compared blanks to... I do think that the Emperor is more than capable of overpowering any blanks. So this glamour um, that projects him as like eight feet tall... Golden. Golden god shining. I'm a golden god! Yes. <laughs> but um, yeah. like... That's not who he, what he actually looks like, you know? Maybe he's, like, psychically changing himself and he's altered himself. Yeah, I kind of wonder, like, uh, does no one really know what he's like because he's projecting a perception about what he, like, actually is. So that's why the Sisters of Silence, like, as these blanks, apparently they can see the true face of the Emperor and they've sworn themselves to silence, never to talk about okay, what they yeah. see. But um, in the moments in the Solar War when he is in the warp and Horus is there, um, the setting is like there's a fire and there's a frozen wasteland in forest behind him and he's sitting in front of this fire. And he just looks like an old dude. Right. He's old, he's stretched, he's tired, thin. Everything that like would never represent the Emperor is like... Frail. Yeah, frail, like ready to give up at a moment's notice, like... Yeah, that's kind of what he's projecting. And I do like to imagine, like, that's his mind, you know? Like, after everything he's been through, everything he's seen, how yeah. do you not just give up at some point? He's just so strong of will. Man of many wills. Yeah. Uh, okay, so back to blanks. Sorry. Before we got one more point, well, I'll just say it. Foresight that makes an Eldar's knees weak. Of course. Palm sweaty. <laughs> Mom <Yeah>. spaghetti. <laughs> In the heart of the craft world, Eldari. <laughs> yeah, like he's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah like he clearly is manipulating everything even like we talked about him putting the dragon on mars like how much of that was foresight we don't know exactly but it's yeah talked about that he has this it's, ability. it's very possible that he did foresee it and yeah. he did put it up there very specifically yeah um yeah i like the comparison that you make with the eldar 
because <laughs> yeah, what they wouldn't give to be able to have his foresight. Yeah, almost everything the Eldar do derives from them looking at the schemes of yeah, fate. like their leaders are just literally making choices based off that they are desperate <laughs> desperate to try and figure out what comes next so yeah. yeah and the only time the emperor was ever clouded it says in his like oh, yeah. vision was right around the siege of terra and the horse heresy and it's the focus of all the chaos gods when all of them were pointed at one thing there's so much turmoil like he couldn't look into the warp the future was clouded to him yeah, yeah. um what uh is there like any real explanation for why he's so why he is so uniquely gifted because like why don't any other perpetuals ever develop the same well perpetual and psychic power are not mutually exclusive. mutually exclusive yeah okay. you can be a perpetual and have no psychic powers okay and you can be a psyker and have no healing regenerative ability whatsoever but there's never been another person who is both I'm sure there has been, but okay. he's different. A, I think because of his origin story, in my opinion, is the the shamans. Right, right, right. So, yeah. like, thousands of people coalescing into yeah, one yeah, being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and created then, him. Yeah. Sort of. And then when he goes to Moloch, apparently he gets, like, supercharged. Super yeah. So he, like, takes a portion of the warp chaos god's understanding of how the warp works and so he's able to yeah, draw yeah. more power and yeah, you put a little warp dust in a spoon heat up the spoon <laughs> tie off a little bandage <laughs> around the arm <laughs> fucking bingo and bango. you'll understand everything <laughs> in the universe <laughs> <laughs> i don't like this <laughs> it's all it takes christian now roll up your sleeve <laughs> Yeah, he, he's a psycho, and basically, you know, if you're ever writing a story about him, you could write him doing any power you wanted, and it would be feasible. Absolutely, you yeah. know. There's not much. Other than reach. getting off that throne. <laughs> That's, well, we'll get to that, Eric, why? <laughs> okay, okay, so something I wanted to say about Blanks and the Emperor. <laughs> no, 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 let's derail one more time. <laughs> okay, go. Um, so the Blanks, like the Sisters of Silence, constantly walked beside him. Yeah. Like, they were there, they were his left hand, the, custo the custodies were his right hand. But the Blanks, they, sub they, they project an aura of nullification of warp energies around them, to where, like, things just don't work around a certain radius around them. How could the Emperor's glamour, how could his powers work while the Blank is right there, unless Blanks mean nothing to him? Yeah. And so at that point... Do the blanks mean anything to like any of the higher chaos powers? So like your whole thing of stringing blanks across the galaxy actually may not be feasible. No, 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 it is. It is. I trust me. Trust I... me. Don't <laughs> poo on that idea. <laughs> don't. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that in the same way that there's different power levels of psychers, there are different levels of blanks. Yeah. But <clears throat> I'm I'm hoping that that doesn't become a common theme. The last thing I would want to see is someone like a blank and like this one would actually be able to destroy the emperor. Sure, yeah. So I hope that they don't like write anything about that. But I like thinking that, <laughs> yes, there are levels. And he's just so leaps and bounds yeah. above anything we can comprehend that no blank could ever touch him. Yeah. Like it, it, we know there are levels to psychers. Like GW has even classified them. Yeah, we have the, the Imperium. Imperium. Yeah. Even, yeah, and like so if psychers and blanks are on the same coin you know we have levels for one i'm assuming we're going to have levels going in the opposite yeah. direction i think scale. that's a rational yeah. thought process almost like a number line yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. negatives rational numbers you yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. but yeah i think the emperor like if that number line exists he's not on that number line yeah it's impossible to actually quantify what he is capable of you know like Maybe all maybe he could have actually just destroyed a chaos god if he wanted to. He could just walk into the warp into their realm and destroy them. Maybe he has a reason for not doing it, you know? Everything he He'll does is it. very specific. Yeah. So maybe he killed Horace's soul. Now Horace is the ultimate blank. And now he's turning Horace to a weapon against chaos. You're gonna have definitely have to speak up louder than that. I said, what if the Emperor <laughs> destroyed Horace's soul and made Horace a blank and turned him into a weapon against chaos? Well, you gotta lay off that warp. <laughs> there. Maybe I should have been injected you so much. <laughs> I would say that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we already move on past his powers? Yeah, so I talk, think so. Let's talk about church. We could talk about his powers forever. <laughs> yeah. 
the ecclesiarchy and the imperial cult. You can refer to it in episode 24, which uh, seems to be a fan favorite. With and Jordan's you, you brother, should. Yeah. You should go listen to that episode. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ecclesiarchy officially, the Adeptus Ministorum, is the official state church of the official imperium, and it maintains... And it and officially spreads, maintains. <laughs> <laughs> and spreads the imperial cult throughout the imperium. The imperial cult is the cult based on the worship of the emperor of mankind as master, defender and father of mankind, developed by mankind to following in his internment of the golden throne. Yeah. Um, yeah, like we know the emperor is just like this whole religion now. Like people worship <laughs> Sometimes him. it just happens. Yeah, sometimes that just happens. You don't mean but to do it. it if you happens. want to learn more about like the religious aspects and like how people worship him, yeah, definitely go check out episode 24 where you can hear more about kind of that and how that organization started and how people started worshiping and yeah it was a whole process from yeah. being outlawed to then just being accepted to the church abusing its power classic yeah. <laughs> but that's not really a story of the emperor no. that's just a story about him so that's about people, people. not understanding the emperor's wishes yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a sad tragic tale <laughs> <laughs> cool um that's all we had for notes we're gonna go into like our tales of the the warp section there's some crazy things about the Emperor going forward. Some weird theories. Yeah, weird theories about what will happen in the future. So we're just going to share a couple of those with you. Um, the first one is called the Star Child. A controversial belief amongst Imperial scholars, the Star Child theory has two aspects. The first is that the Emperor's soul is currently forming as a new entity, the Star Child, in the warp, and that he will be reborn. And the second is that the Emperor had children. Oh, the second... Theory. Theory. Point of this theory yeah. is that the emperor had children. It is believed that the emperor was able to plant the seeds <clears> of his <throat> reincarnation in a potential new soul awaiting birth, the star child. However, it is also believed that this new soul cannot be born while the emperor is still tied to the golden throne, no matter how tenuously. So those few cells are actually trapping him... From a re- truly rebirth. I yeah, think. from yeah. a rebirth into this star child. Yeah. Is this uh, star child like expected to be far more powerful and even ascend what uh, the emperor was uh, able to do even if he's the same yeah I'd like, say he's just the, the emperor same. only got screwed up by Horus, but there's no <clears throat> Horus anymore so if the emperor came back in full power that so this is enough. more just like an insurance policy in case he dies or something if it's true yeah. yeah if it's if it were true along with this the emperor is said to have children Although a man of unparalleled godlike powers, the emperor was still a man, a horny man. <laughs> <laughs> a farming man. <laughs> a farming man. And throughout the many millennia of his life on Terra, he fathered many children. A few of their descendants had inherited some of the emperor's power, including agelessness, and uh, survive into the age of the imperium. Uh, his children are known as Sensai. The ultimate goal of the Sensai is to attain apotheosis with the star child. Yeah, mm-hmm. so... Um... Oh, I guess, never mind. You're going to go into it. I was going to... Yeah, so... I'll like, talk about the, the Sensai Emperor, or... Sure, yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, so, like, the Star Child is basically, yeah, the Emperor, if he dies, he's going to be reborn. Like, his soul is already forming in the warp. He just needs that last string to be severed. I think that's what, if you were to ask people, that's a pretty common consensus among them, is yeah. that, like, well, he's, fo- he's in the warp. He's pretty much only existing there as it is, and... He's already reincarnated once before. His soul is so powerful that no chaos god could Eat actually it. devour and destroy it. Yeah. You know? So it makes complete sense that as soon as he's free, tied, or cut free from his earthly bond, he's now able to enter into some new body, new yeah. host. Yeah. And then, yeah, then you throw in some children. It's just kind of like, yeah, they join with the emperor either. Who knows how that looks? They just merge. Yeah, their their it, power just gets absorbed into yeah. that body. It could be yeah, another suicide pact or whatever, but that is another thing. He might just... just outright kill them with his mind. <laughs> I know? didn't want to say that, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the Sensi Emperor. A hidden group that call themselves the Illuminati have learned from the Eldar's Black Library many truths of chaos, as well as about the Sensi and the fall of the, of, of the Eldar. They realize the Emperor cannot survive in his current state forever, and eventually he will fail. And without the Emperor, mankind will fall to chaos like the Eldar. Such an event would create a fifth god of chaos and create another Eye of Terror, one which would span the entire Imperium. This is a cool thought. So, like, I was thinking, like, what the fifth god would be, and it would just be, like, 
hopelessness or fear despair, despair. and it's just, just like like black emptiness yeah black hole chaos god yeah nice. exactly and it just like literally sucked up some of the galaxy and there's just nothing there now just like you go there and you're like oh! emptiness yeah have you seen uh the never ending story uh not for the long swamp. Time. Yeah. The swamp with the horse. Yeah, yeah. The swamp with sorrow. Oh, yeah. I barely remember it. Artax. <laughs> every time. It every time. Yeah, yeah Treyu, yeah. That's all I remember. Just that infinite engulfing nothingness. <laughs> uh, they ultimately plan to sacrifice the Sensi to the Emperor. The Sensi being his children. Yeah. Um, in the same way that so many psychers have been consumed by the Emperor. The Emperor will be renewed, reborn as the Sensi Emperor to again lead his race in person. I, yeah, so this cult is going around kidnapping what they believe are the children <laughs> of the emperor. Yep. And then they're going to bum rush the room in Terra. <laughs> yep. They're going to get past all those custodies and sisters of silence. And then they're going to kill all of the emperor's children who are inevitably more powerful than them. Yep. <laughs> so it's a good plan. It's a great I, I feel plan. like this is a ramblings of a homeless guy on terror. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, you don't get it. We got to kill the emperor. <laughs> that dude over there is a sensei. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've heard this story in real life. From like... <laughs> yeah. uh, this one's pretty similar to the other plan, the star child, you know, you... a little different, but pretty yeah. similar. It, it's the idea of reincarnation and yeah. you need a catalyst for the reincarnation. Yeah. So, yeah, like I think that's kind of all of it. Like it's all like reincarnation is at the core of all these theories, including this next one. Well, I think it's a, I think that's a good route. Yeah. Like Just, that's how he was born. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you believe that theory, which I think is like the most well believed one. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the next theory is called the guard and inc- God incarnate. Those who advocate the god incarnate believe that the emperor is a god, and like the other gods, he exists within the warp. They believe that just as a man, such as the emperor, could become a god, it stands to reason that a god could become a man. That makes sense. That's that cool. tracks logically. Yeah, <laughs> it's a cool thing. The, ma- the myths and legends surrounding the god inc- incarnate tell of the coming of the divine avatars amid a time of great upheaval and war. These avatars would be special individuals who would become a host for the emperor's consciousness in the warp. Yeah, so like the his first host was uh, Neroth or whatever. Neoth, yeah. Neoth, you know, and then, you know, as the world gets crazier, there might be other avatars that he just is able to literally possess and become. But he is a warp god. But nothing will change theory. until the Fire Nation attacks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So... So they do they believe that he is trapped by this? He cannot leave his current host of the emperor. Yeah, it all it always comes back to he's trapped on the golden throne because he's like tied this is all there. like warp plots to get the emperor killed. <laughs> Why does it always all, end with the emperor having to die? Hey, they're always yeah. Zuchian plans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, 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 you don't get it. We emperor. have to ki- to save him. We have to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love him so much. I'm gonna kill him <laughs> <laughs> to save him. Yeah. But it's a, it's a perfect catch-22, right? Because you're always stuck in this limbo. Like, you're the bad guy if you're trying to kill the Emperor, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, like, it's, yeah, it's perfect 40K is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, There's lots of, like, Inquisitors uh, that they have, like, whole branches dedicated to trying to kill them. And, yeah, like, that's like, perfect infighting dedicated. material where, yeah. yeah, like, oh, no, our, our mission, we're the good guys. But our mission <laughs> is to kill the Emperor. Yeah. And here's your brother Inquisitorial branch whose only job is to stop you, you from, from killing, killing the, the Emperor. emperor. Yeah. And then there's this branch. We don't know what they do. They just kill everything. They <laughs> we don't know why. We're trying to figure out. Every time we ask, I start eating an ice cream cone and I don't know why. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are kind of the main theories about how the Emperor would come back. Um, do you, yeah, do you guys have any crazy theories about how the Emperor would come back? Or what, what do you like out of the three? Which one do you prefer? I think that it makes complete sense they all deal with his death. Yep. He is a perpetual, and if he hasn't recovered by this point, and if he's only continuing to fail, obviously... You have to not... do the thing you haven't tried yet. Yeah. Well, Kill the emperor. He's just obviously <laughs> not going to come back on his own. And if the only, like... I think the Sensei children are interesting, but I don't know. It doesn't seem... Like, they, they have played such a non-existent part in the story for so long. Like, if I was him, and I was actually capable of fathering super men i would have been doing that a <laughs> long <lot>. time yeah <laughs> they're gonna be ageless and they're gonna like be immortal just like me and have a portion of my power and they'll be my actual children 
instead of yes. Primarchs. Yeah, instead of Primarchs. Screwed everything up. Yeah, why would I not just, like, actually do that? But it, it sounds to me like either they aren't as powerful as we've been led to believe or his powers don't transfer over consistently yeah. or maybe he actually never had any children at all and maybe, like, I don't know, I could just as easily see a pregnant woman walking by him and his power do just <laughs> affecting <laughs> the child oh, okay. in the womb that is still sure. developing. Maybe the woman was not pregnant and walked past him and became <laughs> pregnant just by being in his presence. Maybe. Yeah, so, I get accused of that a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Some say I have many children with many women in many cities. <laughs> so I, I'm not convinced even that like the Sensi children are real and exist in any tangible way. Um, yeah, I like the idea that he has to die to live. It's a, it's like another, just like sacrifice story. You yeah. Know. Will you risk it? How yeah. long will the Imperium be in darkness yeah. while he is like reviving himself? Or is he not going to revive himself at all? And we just killed the Emperor. Yeah. Right. Look, Could look. Be. The Emperor wouldn't ask you to go die in the guard if he wasn't willing to die himself. You know, he's not asking you to do anything. He's <laughs> he, not willing exactly. to do himself. Yeah, yeah. That's a good leader. That's a great leader. The best leader. A leader I would kill. <laughs> Four. Four. No, and no, kill. kill the leader so he can resurrect himself. <laughs> <laughs> and resurrect you? No, no, that's not part of the plan. <laughs> that was never part of the plan. Yeah. Um, I, I would posit two things that maybe we haven't jumped into. One, has the Emperor just always been dead this whole time? And a lot of this is the result of just mass belief and mass delusion. Yeah, and you're feeding souls to the throne or yeah, whatever. You're charging so, the, the golden throne yeah. yourself with your own actions, and you just added this spiritual element to everything, right? Like, the person who sees... Things he can't explain, so he attributes yeah. a spiritual. There's, there's too many too many times though that people are literally talking to. Yeah, him this sounds a lot like your like, machine. Yeah, I know, spirit but a lot of people talk to things that they th they say they're talking to. <laughs> this sounds a lot like your machine spirit speculation, where you're like, is it people thinking it's the machine spirit doing something, or is there an actual spirit? Yeah. but I I think the emperor like so all the these astropaths that are going in that room and they're getting their eyes burned out like, it's just a side effect from being near such a powerful device or something in the room is causing that or i'm, I'm playing i'm trying to well, play hardly... every angle here look at this so does this guy right here it would be quite the twist though if that was a yeah like he's been dead all well, along his... <clears throat> or he no, or he never <laughs> <laughs> does he huh? or he never really even existed he's just like almost what like if a the myth. entire <laughs> emperor is a unifying myth to keep the yeah. imperium together? <laughs> yeah well there's people there's someone alive who has seen him Lots Has of people. <laughs> like, he soul-bounds psychers every day. <clears throat> like, yeah. lots of people see him. They see something. We don't know what that <laughs> is. So what, what's going <laughs> to fucking kill you? <laughs> what's your explanation for that something? No, no, no. I would, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not going as far as, I'm not going as far as Jordan here, but I'm, I, I'm thinking. I, this isn't even my personal theory. I just like to throw every option on the table. One, that he's been dead all along. And well, a lot let's of take this it off is... the table and we'll put it in the garbage yeah. where it belongs. <laughs> they, we do know that his body is alive by those cells that yeah. are left over. <laughs> so one couple, hair one hair yeah he's alive <laughs> yeah but it, but that could just be like a mummification thing no it's definitely alive i tasted it <laughs> <laughs> tastes like salty skin um have you ever licked a mummy you know they used to eat mummies okay anyways going <laughs> moving on uh yeah That's moving fair. on no no then. hold on hold on oh the <laughs> other he had, he had another one the other oh, one okay is the whole god of order thing where we the just have to god of chaos we just got to keep moving with this we just got to kill more we just got to believe harder kind of like the incarn like a, he he's yeah. consolidating right now and the more you do the more powerful yeah, and then will he will get. become a true god and yeah. then come and save us all sure. or at least be a better tyrant as a god <laughs> <laughs> yay <laughs> Again, yeah. I'm not supporting these. I'm just throwing what's kind of floating in the ether of like fan. H how is and... that how how is that different from his just his reincarnation? Like he'd be like a full on chaos god. The emperor is, is as powerful, equal to corn, if not stronger than all four chaos gods, and they'll all have to might even uh get the ability to create his own demons. Yeah. Like some oh, people say like no, the I see. Or the a warp entity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the uh the Legion of the Damned Legion are the his Damned. demons, and yeah. yeah, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. It's I'm, a whole story. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying, just saying things. I'm just, I'm just talking. The well, idea well, we've been doing for the last hour. And half. <laughs> it's I haven't. It's not the first time I've heard that. The idea yeah. that he is like turning into a warp entity. I dislike it. I prefer him still having his roots in humanity, and the idea that like he can just uh, leave humanity. I don't know. It. He's ascending the same way he wants to elevate humanity. He's ascending himself to the next plane. I'm 
again, I'm not I'm not sold on this. I'm just playing Emperor's Advocate. <laughs> yep. I wonder, like, would that would him being a chaos god be better for humanity than him it doesn't being matter. a human? Well, no, because that's his well, goal. Yeah, that's his yeah. Goal I, then always... he's literally a god, and he'll just be like, "Here's everything I ever wanted to do for you. Have it. Here's my literal angels for you. <laughs> yes, like warp I will, angels. Yeah, and... protect you from everything, and yeah. he'll watch over you like a god. Like everything, like everything the Ecclesiarchy is saying is true now. Like he is yeah. protecting you. He is. Corn opens a warp puddle on your planet. The Emperor opens up one right next to it. <laughs> just like, fucking <laughs> clashing right there. The yeah. planet's safe now. And, and then, like, like your fuck, soul... We don't know what happened there, but... <laughs> and it also gives hope for your soul, because as we know, when you die, your soul gets screaming into the warp where it gets eaten Devoured. by demons. Yeah. Whereas, like, now you have somewhere safe, your soul can abide. Yeah, There's can... a heaven now. We've created it. Yeah, the Emperor will protect you in his realm, yeah. or you might even become a part of the Emperor. Yeah, you now. might become an angel or become <laughs> unified with the universe as the Emperor, or whatever yeah. other bullshit you want to throw in the mix. Yeah. I'm creating okay, a religion I could, here. <laughs> I could see how, like, he could even consider that as an ulterior, um, like, endpoint. Like, how better for me to exist everywhere at once than yeah. just as a single man. Yeah. And you, Have I won you over to the church he yet, could, he could choose. <laughs> he could choose, like, the ruler of his imperium by divine intervention. Or just be the god that rules directly, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever however you want to cut the cake. He's a god now. He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it. I'm not. It's too noble of fate for 40k for sure. sure. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, unless now something a god changed. Of good unless yeah, something order. changed in him. And now you could also argue being a god of order isn't as nice as it sounds. Like he is such a god of order, and that, the Imperium like, is not an orderly yeah, like, place. Right, like he's gonna. He's gonna, yeah, exactly. There's no freedom, and yeah. you're. You know, he turns you into zombies, legions of slaves, essentially. Like, yeah. Any any slight infraction is death. Like nothing can be out of order, right? Yeah, like, perfectionism. That'd be a cool side cult for him. The, yeah like uh yeah just like a, a cultist war band or whatever yeah that like worship him like that yeah like a god of but order. like order like, everything order. has to be in place in its place yeah. yeah and a place for everyone yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, not, yeah my my personal favorite is any of those catch 22s where 40k gets you and like oh will we won't we can we can we can't yeah. we that's a perfect 40k where it's just balanced but always intention right just like me hmm at any minute, I could snap. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't like that. You got you got a family, Christian. Dude. You have children. <laughs> yeah, but any minute I could snap. <laughs> uh, um, do you guys have anything else? I I got my next point. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the emperor is like this weird guy. When you really read a lot of his stories, none of it makes sense. Like. You can never... He has this foresight ability, yet he always makes stupid mistakes, and you wonder, what are you doing? How are you so bad at this? How did you make half of your sons hate you? You know? How did you do all that? So, I like to think... Uh, this is the plan. This is the theory that it's called. It's uh, This was my plan all along, laps, laughs in corpse voice. <laughs> um, the, the emperor always wanted this. He's seen the future. He always wanted to be a god. The only way to become a god is... That, you know, you have half the people turn against you and then he plans all this whole fucking you thing. You become and the crux of, yeah. like, what an entire That's... galaxy believes is the most important exactly. moment Exactly. Like, history. he set that up, you know. Yeah, this was all for him. Yeah, He exactly. claimed it was for humanity, but it was about well, him. Well, no, I still think that it was still for humanity, but he saw this was the only way to actually keep humanity around was to sacrifice himself in this way. Plus, like, I always make that joke about him banging the farmer's wife. He can leave his body anytime he wants. Like, he's not trapped in his physical form. I'm less convinced now that he's not trapped. Yeah. Like, he, <laughs> it's so important for him to, like, hold on to those last yeah. little bit of life. Yeah. But for the first thousand, two thousand, three thousand? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Four? Um, yeah. So you think he's just waiting to finally die? No, I don't. Th no, I don't. Th I think this is it. Oh, this is this was his plan, and for the the rest of ever, living in perpetual agony and maybe, torment. No, no, and it's torture. like a whole Jesus thing, right? Like I have to do this thing. It's the only way to save humanity is for me to throw myself on this barbed wire and yeah. suffer so that humanity. This is the only way humanity survives. It's not 
nice it's not great but yeah. it survived and the fact that he would think this is the best outcome for humanity maybe it's that's the only one where fucked. they survive though. like that's <laughs> yeah that's 40k yeah again, yeah right like sure if yeah. this if, this is the best we can get exactly yeah we that's are living horrible in, yeah <laughs> i like to think that that it was his plan so all the stupid times he's like haha angron i'm not gonna save all your battle brothers there was a reason for that sure. it's, it's not because he doesn't understand basic yeah. when he's human being interaction hypoc- when he's yeah. being <laughs> hypocritical towards the thousand sons and he doesn't care about the rune priest Exactly. He's like, I'm He's doing like, this very know. pointedly. I already know what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, the only way for humanity to He's carry on. He's just accelerating on. things to get to the point where he's, yeah, where they are at. You yeah. Know? Unfortunately, yeah. it's he has been deteriorating for 10,000 years. So if that was his ca- the case, yeah. he, he inevitably, like time has caught up with him and he's about to expire it takes yeah. four times more psychers now than it used to yeah that parts of the golden throne but again failing like when you're desperate for survival you'll do anything and it, you're in the moment like I'll, i'm gonna cut off my arm to survive well now you might bleed to death you might bleed to death and time might catch up to you but you also might not right sure. like if that's your well, only yes. way you're getting out of the situation you're weighing all the possibilities i think this that- is it like you're We're saying that hindsight it. is 2020, but you don't need hindsight when you can see into hindsight the hindsight is 40k, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need hindsight when you can see into the future. <laughs> you're like, oh, hindsight was 2020. If only I known it was going to be so hot out, I wouldn't have taken my ice cream outside. Well, you can see into the future and what understand that it's going to be really hot outside. outside. Is the only way to to get things done. Then you I have guess. to take it outside, even if it melts. Yeah. I, I don't know. It like if he was unable to see even this far because it sounds to me like humanity is failing and it's just inevitable it's failure at this point yeah like so we do know that during the horse heresy the emperor's vision was clouded so maybe like up until then he's playing every piece perfectly angron perfect play but then yeah there's that small little brief window where Maybe he was supposed to do X with Magnus, but he he didn't. He was not able to convince Magnus to get on the throne. And that was the one piece of his puzzle that, that the so, chaos gods clouded just So maybe slightly. the future he's in right now is not the one he originally intended. Because yeah. he has like it was, he has been manipulated. Yeah, like it was so close. Like so I don't close. mind that at yeah, all. Yeah, like all it would have taken was just um you know, Magnus on the throne, and then we're back in business. You know, yeah. Um, I don't mind I the idea. The God that, and... I don't mind the idea that the Chaos Gods got that final little play in mm-hmm. that completely yeah. wiped out his his whole plan. Yeah, where it was like, yeah, they clouded his vision, and now all of a sudden he's on the flagship fighting horse, getting he's fucked like, up. Yeah, he's like, this was not. This was not <laughs> what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like that actually. But, yeah, just yeah, everything's and then that everything pla- except for one one moment he was perfect at. Yeah. Laughs in corpse voice. <laughs> so. Well, now cries in cries. corpse voice. <laughs> I was not meant to no. be tortured for 10,000 years. Yeah. They I... didn't even put a cushion on the chair. <laughs> my ass is so sore. <laughs> I have such a, an itch on my nose. Oh, um, yeah, that's my theory. Like, that's the only way I can rationalize why he's such a... A douchebag. A controversial, yeah. yeah, every decision. It's like, well, that goes exactly against what you just did yeah. in your last book. Like, yeah, that's how I justify it. But We all got to have that headcanon. We all got to try to. That's actually what I was going to say earlier on when we were going to, like, measure dicks. I was like, maybe the emperor <laughs> isn't that bad. And he's, like, he is doing what he's intending to do all along and for the good of humanity. So, like, it's more of a noble yeah. thing. I-, I was also going to mention that, like, there are times I would argue that he might be so detached from humanity because of all the other things that preoccupy his mind. Like you were saying, he doesn't have time to care about your personal problems. He's got bigger things to deal with. Um, like one character that comes to mind in Watchmen is uh, Dr. Manhattan, right? He's just so, he's such on, he exists on such another level of plane. Like he, in, in Watchmen, he comes off as like very like cold and calculating and like, people struggle to have a personal relationship with him, obviously, because he sees everything in, like, on atomic levels and, like, time and space moving forward, and right? Just so, like, infinitely beyond your perception that, like, the Emperor could be operating in that same headspace. That we just don't get it. You don't understand. Yeah, like, it's very He's similar to the stuff. Necron, actually, how they perceive time as, like, nothing. Yeah. Like, time... Time focuses almost everything that we do. Every, like, sense of urgency that we have, every desire we have to, like, All our instincts, copulate. survival. Yeah, like, to be, um, like, explosive in effort and violent is all because, like, our lives are short. And we have to, like, do as much as possible with our energy in a short amount of time as possible. Yeah, but when you have someone... running out. Yeah. Exactly. When you have someone who can... <laughs> 
be beyond that, see beyond it. Yes, they divorce themselves from every fear that we might have. Like, how could you actually think that you could empathize with that person? You yeah. can't. Like, it's actually impossible. Right. Like, so now you're talking about the emperor, right? Like, yes, exactly. Like, ha- to I, I'm, I'm under no illusions that he is human anymore. He has transcended that. I mean, probably... Yeah, like, the, when he was born, he transcended it. Absolutely, like, yes. It was already a bunch of old yeah. dudes and a baby. So, <laughs> so, so when I say he's, like, I mean, manipulative... And, <laughs> and when So when I say he's, like, manipulative and narcissistic and, like, bad, whatever the words yeah. I use, those are human words... Yeah. Describing, from your perspective, describing your human limited his perspective. behaviors. Yeah. But to him, yeah. like he's doing things on another level. Like exactly, you can't comprehend. I can't play yeah. that game that he's playing because I can't even begin to understand the rules of yeah. him. Yeah, know? like for all we know, his throne plan is a fifteen thousand year plan, and where like. We're he held the humanity of together, yeah. and then he yeah. gets up all of a sudden. Now he's really sealed himself as God. Yeah, so absolutely. 15,000 years. His, his game is incomprehensible exactly. for us. Now I'm going to flip that table and say, what if the emperor is not as powerful as we all think <gasps> he is? He's just a very powerful human, and well, he suffers from very human flaws like pride. Pride I'll being show his... you the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but pride is his biggest flaw. And like this goes back to the whole thing I was saying about tragedy. Like The emperor's story is a tragedy. He tried. He thought better of humanity. Yeah. Humanity screwed him up just yeah. as badly as he got screwed. And uh, that was his mistake. And he's not perfect. And that's why he comes off as a dick sometimes. Like, he's he's trying to calculate and fix things that have been screwed up. Yeah. And he's working in a broken system as a broken person. Yeah. Just as much himself. And, like, because he's not perfect, like what chances the rest of humanity have, right? Yeah, and we know he's not perfect. He murdered somebody right off the bat. Well, again, that's not... That could be justice, though. That could be... That could also just be a story. Sure. Yeah, Yeah. fair enough. But my... Yeah, my point is, is, like, his greatest flaw is that he was proud. He thought he could elevate humanity to something humanity could never really be. And that's the true truth. If that's the case... (laughs) If that's the case, then almost everything that is horrible and terrible that has happened can be laid at his feet. Maybe. about right. And that (laughs) that seems like the the tragedy. But at the same time, like, how often do tyrants save for your own good, right? Yeah, man. And he genuinely tried. He he believed in something that wasn't ever going to happen. And he did a lot of bad things to get there, and it turns out blew up in his face, as it often does yep. in reality. I think it's a little bit of a stretch. I don't think it's the worst thing I've heard, but the idea that he's nothing more than a common man just with powers. No, well, yeah. Like, Malkador, like, viewed him and was like, oh my god. He's you're... better than everyone else, Malkador, but he's still not good enough. I think He's Mal- still too human, that's my point. Yeah. And, like, again, his whole drive is to elevate humanity. And, again... You know, the new man, like, trying to bring forth that thing that will never be. His, his Utopia flaw, doesn't happen. It, exactly, right? As it doesn't matter if you have godlike powers. You still can't fix people. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they're still going to screw you up. But I don't think that was plans. ever his intention to fix people. I think his intention was, was to create elevate. a galaxy that was safe enough for humanity to live in. He wanted to ensure humanity's survival, not I'm going to bring you to the edge of evolution well, and like, make you perfect. According to, like, earlier on where he was like, yeah, temperate, like, elevate humanity's psychic potential. Everyone will become a psyker. Everyone, if that is indeed his drive, is what I'm saying. Like, And again, this goes back to, like, we really don't know. Yeah. Right? But if it is his goal to to accelerate evolution of humankind, well, I think it was a doomed project from the beginning. If that was his goal, then there's almost nothing that he did in his life that shows me it was his goal. But it does, like, if his goal is stated to protect humanity, well, yeah, the Great well, Crusade, the, the... Protecting humanity is part of it. That's the starting point. That's the baseline. And then I once... think you're extrapolating way too far because you haven't seen anything that... I'm going off what was written. <laughs> <laughs> no, but because... I wrote that. <laughs> well, let's fight with Mark because I'm, I'm going anything. off of the text here. <laughs> based, on what, based on what you're using as evidence, I could also say his ultimate goal is to destroy humanity because it's going to be so much easier for him to kill humanity if he gets rid of everything first and then now it's only humanity everywhere and no and now they can thrive and now they can now they have the perfect fertile field to like evolve their psychic powers without threat or whatever else right so again that, that has to do with their safety again though yeah that's the first step i just said hmm. i don't know he has constantly said that he's like creating a place where humanity will be safe he has said that but i have yet to see him say i'm doing this so to advance mankind 
to advance everything that's a, it, science reason but that's a, it's a metaphor you're you're using that literally metaphor. stamping out every religion is a <laughs> metaphor <laughs> really what i meant no was. but that's for <laughs> <laughs> i destroyed every religion on the earth because i truly meant something different i'm just i'm throwing things out there um like i said i like things that are intention and in balance and like will they won't they yeah you know is he a tragic like 40k is full of tragedy tragedy in the true greek sense right like he the big thing about tragedies is pride. Ancient heroes also always suffer from pride. They're gods. They're, usually they're gods and or um, demigods, and they always get brought down. One, by the, their own mistake, something that they did. Hubris. Two, hubris. Yeah, often the, the mistake comes from hubris, which is the lesson. The lesson is the emperor is proud. That is his fatal flaw. He brought himself down. I can I could buy into that. Like, yeah, you just... It's classic Greece. Man. Sure, sure. Toga, toga, toga. <laughs> I think his power is beyond what you are willing to give him. Yeah, but he also got kicked around by Chaos God. Like, we don't know. That's the thing. We don't know. Unless we had, like, a chart that measures or someone distinctively says the Emperor is stronger than the Chaos Gods. Because if the Chaos Gods are stronger than him, what chance does he have? Right? Well, I think that in the warp, they are stronger than him. But I think in right. the material so, reality, he is stronger than they are. Sure, and that could be that same tension and balance. And, like, when he's playing in their territory, they can still screw him up. They can still mess up his plans, even the most perfect Yeah, plans. but that's not his pride. That's him understanding that in the materium, I am stronger well, than they are. Well, maybe his pride led him to the point where he ends up on a golden throne. Yeah. Everything that led up to this moment is his pride. Anyways, I'm... I'm going in circles now the truth is usually somewhere in the middle <laughs> take all those theories we just throw out there and yeah. synthesize all of them exactly then email us that theory. <laughs> I'm a real banger of a so theory I, yeah so i could like do a flow chart please <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um yeah that's all i had Oof. that's I'm a lot pooped. yeah what a crazy guy that is you know that old emperor fellow <laughs> does he have a name or is it just the emperor? They said it was Mal like Neuroth. So that was uh, yeah. an identity yeah. he assumed. Mm. Yeah. But Malkador convinced him to take the name of emperor and forsake every other title that he may be called. When <laughs> but he did he have to... like a birth name? He must have. Yeah. You know? And also in 40k, know. there's always a risk with having a true name. Mm. It's a, oh, we yeah, it's a weakness. Yeah. Isn't that more of a demonic thing? Like, I, I know demons it, have true it can names. Affect, I think, well, being like, yeah, like the, the Emperor. Primarchs had true names, even. Well, yeah. when they became demons. <laughs> no, I don't I think Like, Rogel Dorn doesn't have a true name. I, I think he does. I think they all do because they're made with, imbued with the essence of the warp. That's, that's a, a story that's a for another time. Yeah, <laughs> for another time. Where so, the Emperor. Hear? Okay, whatever. Would you, would you serve him or not? Let's go around the table. <laughs> Yes what do you no? mean, would you? The answer is yes. Okay, that's a solid resounding yes for Merrick. I'm looking. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, and it's okay. not the bolter pointed at the back of my head that's making <laughs> no, me say of this. Not. You're, no, you're a devout follow we. Uh, Jordan, where's your faith at these days? <laughs> I'm a heretic. I, okay, me too. I feel like I can confidently come out as a heretic too. Oh, wait, you were believing this whole time? I'm not believing either. <laughs> wait, now I'm the odd man out? Well, I don't, I don't want to be in a room full of heretics. <laughs> I'm a heretic. I only wear ship corn <laughs> good bad um yeah that's the emperor episode that was a real fucking tree <laughs> i can't wait for the siege of terry book to come out and we finally know what happened i'm excited but... to for them to spell out what happens on the vengeful spirit because yeah. i just know i'm gonna have such a rage erection that day <laughs> what the fuck are they writing now it will never be as it hard will, as I will you are that day never be that hard <laughs> <laughs> okay let's go to our patreon hey if you're still listening and you've listened this long you've got if you've laughed even once just one <laughs> small even a chuckle uh go support us on patreon it really helps us uh, continue to do the show and it's just a nice getting a little check every now and again for the hard work we do um this week we actually did not have any patreon people oh, we, we recorded back to back episodes, yeah we recorded just yesterday so <laughs> there hasn't been any time but um <laughs> hey you know you could be the first one on the next episode of lorehammer <laughs> to be read off wow what a wow <laughs> <laughs> what a gift for you what a gift <laughs> <laughs> oh man cool that uh, was awesome well that was episode 99 wow yeah. our next episode is episode 100 yeah do we want to say real quick uh about the big 
guest spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've we said long ago. Um, yeah. We did an interview. Mark and I did an interview with Graham McNeil a lot. Like, geez, probably over December. yeah, over so, a month ago at this yeah. point. And we've been waiting for our hundredth episode to release it, and we're really excited to share it with you guys. So yeah. make sure you come back. Yeah, for our one hundredth. We were he messaged him. I'm like, yeah, I just need 30 minutes of your time. No big deal. We talked to him for like an hour and a half. Yeah. And then some after the interview. It was, it was awesome. It was really good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you guys should be just as excited to hear it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I guess thank you, Jordan, for coming on the show. No problem. Always Thanks a for pleasure to have again. you. Yeah. And, and thank you, Christian. <laughs> no, well, I don't think we. At least as it was only his that. last time. So. Yeah, thank God that was the last time for this son of a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> jeez. And uh, I guess thanks to you guys, the listeners, for joining us on this multiple-hour-long journey. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Peace.